Welcome, everybody, to the Titan Series Season 2 Challenger Finals. My name's Power Bang. I'll be your host for the evening, and I'm so excited to get 12 of the top teams from the Challenger Division that have been battling out for the last three weeks here on the big screen. For you guys to enjoy, they'll be joined by four of the premier teams as well, and we got to talk about it. It is the finals, so let's get into the format of the Titan Series competition. This is the Titan Series, Mobile Gaming's ultimate esports showcase. Teams will battle for ultimate battleground supremacy and a prize pool that stands at $2,000. Each Titan Series season is four weeks long and teams will play in two divisions, the Premier Division and the Challenger Division. Both Premier and Challenger teams will play in the qualifier stage that spans the first three weeks of the season. From there, the top 12 teams from the Challenger qualifiers will join the bottom four teams from the Premier qualifiers to play in Week 4's Challenger Finals. In the Challenger Finals, anything can happen. As the top four finishers will join the Premier qualifiers top 12 in the Premier Finals later on in Week 4. The prize pool will be divided amongst the top three teams in the Premier Finals, and the top 12 Premier Finals teams will be guaranteed a slot in next season's Premier Division. In the Titan Series, the stakes are always high, as teams have the ability to climb up or plunge down the leaderboard. If you think your team has what it takes to compete at the highest level, prove it. Sign up to play by visiting titanseries.gg. You can also stay up to date with your favorite teams, look up detailed team and player statistics, and even grab custom Titan Series player cards to share with the community. This is the Titan Series, forged in fire. Ooh, it's the finals, baby. We are about to get into it. The teams have all been battling it out the last three weeks on the battlegrounds. We've seen some insane matches, and I want to talk about some of those that we've witnessed over the past three weeks. But before we do that, let's invite on our panel for tonight. We've got some epic talent broadcasting these Challenger Series game. I'm joined by Hot Jukes and Mustache Dave. Gentlemen, how are we doing? Hot Jukes, are you feeling good tonight, baby? Oh, you know I am, baby. About to see the Challenger Division finish up, see which four squads are going to make it onto that Premier Division. I want to see some new names. I want to see some fire right off the bat. Dave, what about you? We are locked in. He's uh, he's getting geared up for tonight. Did you have a glizzy today, my friend? <laughs> hey, they call me Glizzy Day for a reason, man. One a day keeps the doctor away. You know, you put the relish, you put the ketchup, and sometimes mustard if you're feeling spicy here. So, yeah, I'm ready to go. These teams are currently getting locked and loaded here, PB. We got six exciting games here this evening. Amazing. Well, speaking of teams, we should probably talk about some of those teams. We've got a whole new host of talent joining us tonight on the Battlegrounds. Twelve of these teams have battled their way through the Challenger Division, and they'll be joined by the four who were relegated from Premier, those being Bope, Dauntless, Execute, and Wanted Vigilantes. But of those 12 teams, Hot Jukes, I see a few that I recognize from seasons past. I'm talking the likes of Excuse and Hellcrime. We've got Olympia Esports. We've got Strangers BD. Any of these teams for you sticking out as uh, a team to maybe watch tonight? A hundred percent. And one of them off the bat is going to be Excuse, okay? Because I think these guys, you know, looking at how they played in the past, they should finally show up here and get it done today. So Excuse is going to be the top team out of all of them, but you definitely named it. You know, we've seen Hellcrime perform before, Strangers BD. I, I want to see a chicken dinner right off the bat, or at least a top three finish, just so we can get comfortable. Love that. Dave, coming to you, my friend. Any of these teams sticking out uh, as one to watch maybe this evening? Hey, um, I got a couple teams for sure looking at Dauntless to reclaim their spot within the Premier Finals. They are one of the Premier teams that did get bumped down to compete in tonight's lobby. So I got my eye on Dauntless when we're looking at Challenger teams. Zombie Boys NA, they stick out to me, all right? Uh, I mean, we're, we're talking about vibes here. They passed the check. But as far as stats go, I have to say Olympia Esports, uh, looking at their stats, they average about 0.83 average eliminations per game. So I'm looking at Olympia to really show up here tonight. Ooh, 
I'm excited, baby. Let's go check out the scoring for the Titan Series Season 2 Challenger Finals. Here we go, baby. It's the standard 10 points for the chicken dinner. Six for second place on down. Anyone in the top eight will score some rank points. And obviously, anybody eliminating their foes will be picking up one point for eliminations. And that is going to be big. Really rewards that aggressive play style. We should probably dive into the bonus points as well because every one of these teams teams coming in to this competition tonight will be bringing in all likelihood some points with them and so those that finished at the top of that challenger division we're looking at like ruck esports they're gonna be bringing in like 10 points tonight to start the competition off each of these points could be absolutely crucial as the evening goes on and hot jukes each of the teams coming down from premier division bring five bonus points with them that puts them right at the cutoff line and so they'll have to put up or shut up to see if they belong back in those premier finals on thursday yeah 100 percent. i mean these teams they honestly have no excuse at this point they need to be in the top four bonus points are great but we've seen in the past that they aren't everything right they kind of help with that first game jitters just in case you have a bad start but that's really about it it's still anybody's game here and i know we got some hungry squads looking to finally make a name for themselves love to see that rookie sports is one that i called out just a moment ago and i gotta say they gotta be the favorite coming into tonight's competition we've got the teams coming down from the premier division that obviously bring the experience against the best competition out there in the region but man, these guys, the way they've dominated the last three weeks of the Challenger division, we're talking five chicken dinners. Woo. We're talking 55 points more than second place in the Challenger division. They're coming for blood tonight, baby. So, Rucky Sports, keep your eyes on them. Speaking of, though, tonight's maps, I would love to check out what is on the agenda tonight because it will be a little bit different from our first three weeks. Instead of four games tonight, we're actually going to be diving into six of them. So Ooh. get your PUBG Mobile hats ready to rock. We are going to be diving into Erangel first, dropping in here just in a couple of minutes. And Miramar following this up. Hot Jukes, I got to point out, my friend, this is some of the things that I wanted to talk about going into today's games. I had a chance to be one of the lucky, I don't know, three or four people to spectate the actual Challenger games over the past three weeks. Miramar had multiple finishes during the qualifiers and on the Southern Island. And I want to see a finish on the Southern Island here tonight. Oh. When's the last time you've seen one of those? It has been a hot minute, probably at least two years ago. I remember one all the way in that Southern Island. But man, other than that, it is. I would love to see one today. I'll, I'll put it on my bingo card, right? Right next to that good old fashioned, you know, Hacienda finish. But honestly, a Southern Island finish would be sick. <laughs> Dude, I, I tell you what, we checked that out, Dave. It was uh, literally, it was like teams didn't know what to do. Because when's the last time you've seen the zone go that far south on Miramar? You, you ended up with like five, six squads down there, final circle. No one knew the angles. No one knew how to play it because it's just not something that teams really prepare or practice for. But I want to see some chaos like that tonight. So, Dave, my friend, I got to ask, uh, I'm going to come to you. And I want to get your official prediction of the four teams. I want you to pick four from this list. Throw that team list back up there, too, so we have a chance to, to pick into those. Dave, give me four teams. Who's going to go on tonight? I, I want everybody to pick, and I'm hoping that uh, we can nail all four tonight. Somebody. All right, all right. Uh, Rook Esports, without a doubt. You know, like you mentioned, five chicken dinners in their qualifiers to make it here. You, you can't doubt them. You know, five chickens, they are feeling themselves uh, about 50 points ahead of everybody else is what you mentioned. So I got them on my list. I'm writing it down. Rook, ba -da -ba -da -ba. I got to go with Dauntless. Last week, I was on the Dauntless hype train for about three matches. You know, they let me down, all right? But the thing is, that was last week. Now we're in this week. They have the opportunity to make that comeback. So I'm looking at Dauntless as one of them. I'm going to throw a wild horse and say Zombie Boys. And then behind Zombie Boys, I'm going with Hellcrime. I love it. Hot Juice coming to you. Same exact question. Uh, I love the the wild horse that you threw in there. I have not heard that before, but I love it. So uh, zombie boys, uh, the pick from Dave. Ah, geez, give me your four. All right, right off the rip, it's got to be Execute. Honestly, they have no business even being in the Challenger Finals. They should have been in a Premier Division team, so that I'm expecting them, right, to be at the top of this lobby. Next down, I got to go with Dauntless, right? We've seen Dauntless 
frag out. I know you got one name in particular, PB, that you're really fond of when it comes to Dauntless. So hopefully we can see him pop off today. Third, I mean, I got to go Wanted Vigilantes, right? It's still, at the same time, we've seen them get it done in Premier Division, so they have that experience. But last but not least, I'm going to go with Ruck Esports, right? Why not? You got to bring Ooh. one squad in. Hopefully, they can cause a ruckus, right? And uh, <laughs> ruck up the whole lobby today. Ruck it up. Who, who did you say right before Ruck? I missed the, the third one. Wanted Vigilantes. Wanted Vigilantes. Wanted Vigilantes. I'm literally writing these down because I'm going to make sure we keep track of them. Uh, the entire show. Okay, so if I got to go my four, Ruck Esports has got to be my top. Their performance over the qualifiers, too crazy, right? Like 182 overall points through 12 games. <sighs> Mind blown, right? I'm going to go with Olympia Esports uh, in there as well. I'm going to go Execute, and I'm going to go Dauntless. So two of the upcoming Challenger teams I've got my eye on, two of the Premier teams coming down. Those are my four picks. I don't know... Uh, Man, I, I don't know about my picks, though, Jukes. I feel mm -hmm. like I've been jinxing people <laughs> like left and right with who I pick. So I don't know if we can expect any of those four to move on. Let's talk execute for a moment, though. We saw execute, Dave, in that, in that final game. Almost make it in. They what? tied for 13th. I mean, they were right there. They were so far out of it. They had to have a miracle come through. And they put up like a ton of points. If I recall, it was something like 18 points in that final game. They almost got there, but unfortunately for them, one of the other teams that needed it also performed pretty well and actually leapfrogged. So Execute finds themselves here just by the skin of their teeth. What do they have to do today to pick things up and maybe put some consistency together like we saw in that last game just last week? Yeah, I mean, looking back at Execute, they've definitely been trying out new squad mates. They've been trying new things and just trying to see what fits. And I believe we saw last week towards the end of the evening things started to finally look like they're working for the squad. They're finally gaining their confidence and gelling together. You can tell the team comms were finally coming together. So I'm a little sad they didn't make it, but on the same flip end of that coin, I'm happy they're here because that just means they have more games to really practice and get warmed up because I didn't want to pick them because I don't want to jinx them, but I do agree with you fellas. I do think they will make it to the Premier Finals, and these games are going to help them to perform better in those finals. That's right. Dave, I appreciate the insights, my friend. I couldn't agree more. We saw Execute absolutely pop off against some of the better competition of the Premier Division. So let's go ahead, hop into our first game. Dave, we'll catch you in just a bit. Hot Chooks and I are going to take it away for Aaron Gill. Match number one, Challenger Finals. We are rocking and rolling hot jukes. So we saw Execute pop off just last week, like we mentioned. Again, if they can put up those 16, 18 points just a few times, they might be in a much better spot to try to move on here and be one of those four teams. And again, remember the format of this tournament. Four teams tonight will be moving on to Thursday's Premier Finals. So literally anyone can still win the Premier Division. Any of the teams here tonight are still in the running. Absolutely, PB, as we get this first game on the way. Nice center plane path looking real good, but to kind of just touch on what you were talking about earlier, you know, when it comes to execute, okay? I kind of agree with Dave, you know, because I've said this once, I'll say it a million times, right? The Titan series is the place in North America if you're looking to make a name for yourself and to put in the best work possible so i think that they need to see the silver lining of being relegated right it's okay you know what we're gonna get to put even more games in right dial in tune things up but they can't let it slip they need to get into top four because it would be a huge l if they stay in the challenger division i agree completely and uh with execute they are arguably probably the most experienced team in this lobby uh they've got the most <laughs> history uh they you know their, their name has been around a long time so definitely want to see what they do but uh one of the things hot jukes is that we take a peek at the map here i am not familiar with any of the standard drop spots for really many of these teams so i'm curious to see where this actually uh, lines up for everyone. No one has gone to the Southern Island, so everyone north right now is the zone kind of develops to the northeast here. Uh, again, I'm, I got my eyes on Ruck as they are looting the west coast kind of down by Quarry. And I want to keep my eye on them as we watch as they uh, have been dominant so far. We'll see if that translates here uh, to these Challenger Finals. Yeah, 100%. I'm looking at the map right now. Start to see a little bit of action over in Gatka. Wanted Vigilantes. Fishy. The first player to go down. So, uh, great start to my pick. Gotta love to see that right there. 
light work, making light work of uh, one of Vigilantes right there. And now Luna's out of position. And if they're able to kind of hurry up and get looted, I wouldn't be surprised if they go for him as well. You know, it's not where you want to be having one of your teammates uh, eliminated early on and finding yourself kind of stranded on an island. This is not where one of Vigilantes wanted to kick things off. Uh, unfortunate for them. But you know what? This Challenger uh, Finals is a bit different from previous seasons. In Season 0, Season 1, we basically had the top 12 overall teams. But because the demand was so crazy for this Season 2 and we had so many more teams, we actually had four different groups. So all of these teams had to finish top three in their group to move on to these Challenger nice. Finals. So every team you're seeing here has finished in the top three. Execute into it early. They're off to a good start here with Kill Switch putting one on the board. I actually like that change because it kind of gets them in a position of confidence, right? They're saying, okay, we made it, right? We're actually a top three squad going into this. Now, this is a whole different monster. And honestly, even as though as the, the, the level of competition is going up extremely for those squads, Execute can't do what they've been doing either, right? Because... The strategies in this lobby are going to be a lot different than the Premier Division, right? Rotating fast away, you might see some teams take fights that normally you won't see squads in the Premier Division take. So I think, like, when it comes to a squad like that, they just need to kind of go back to the basics, right? Just play together, just do what you've been doing, and it shouldn't be a problem. Absolutely. Fundamentals are huge. We'll take a peek over here at Lethal Mentality. Looting up, it looks like uh, getting some nice weapons here. A little split. They got their eyes on Execute right now. Execute establishing position early on at those South George crates. And uh, you can see as we take a peek, it's uh, several others from that team. It's interesting because they've got multiple teams in their sight lines right now. And here we go. Oh. Luna has been attacked, but he answers back. Luna getting the knock to open up this fight. Okay, yeah, but the rest of Light work doing a great job of being there. Okay, so... Now we're going to have to see a crazy play from Luna. Now with that knock, it looks like his teammate's going to get there. Oh, that nade did hurt, though. Nielsen on that back line is going to have to really make a play and shut down Cesar. Trying to figure out where the rest of his team is, man. Mm. Luna in serious trouble. There is the, uh, right. the backup of Illusion. Illusion a little bit too late, and we'll see if he's actually able to escape here. Hits that dip just in time and gets out of the line of sight here of Lightwork. Lightwork putting two on the board, actually three on the board here, as only one member of Wanda Vigilante is able to escape. And we've got other teams on the rotation now headed right for Lightwork. We'll see if they're able to actually uh, gear up and recover here before they end, end up in the next one. I like that start. I like that start a lot. I mean, they've executed that perfectly, right? Okay, you get a nice little early game finish. You know that there's possibly some other, you know, solo teammates split looting. Hey, let's send the whole squad, be real careful, and just add some more points on the board. Easy points, as a matter of fact. So, great job. And I like seeing this kind of play style here from one of these teams in the Challenger division. The easiest points. <laughs> yeah, free. free. <laughs> Love that. So, Execute, hey, they're getting the start that they needed as well. They're locking down South George right now, and uh, they got one on the board. You know, Lightworks got three, so... Equally uh, as awesome for them. You know, let's take a peek here. I want to go look up light work really quickly and just take a peek at where they finish relative uh, to everyone else in that challenger division. So if we take a peek, it looks like light work was actually the last qualifying team into this challenger finals. And uh, that's awesome because they are right now sitting on the top of the pack. Beautifully, beautifully done. And and like I said, you know, just seeing their play style, their movement, picking up those early points, it's a really good sign. One thing that I'm really looking forward towards is these later zones, though, is seeing how these squads react to them and how quickly they're off to the rotation. Because I'll tell you what, PB, oh my goodness, right? Seeing some of these other tournaments, divisions, these teams move so fast now, it's ridiculous. It's like they just get a level one vest and they're on the move. So I want to see some of that here in the challenger division. It's all you need, baby. Just get that level one vest. Revolver. That's automatic chicken dinner. <laughs> Give me a revolver. You know what I'll do with it. Oh, yes, sir. Here we go. Check it out. Illusion has been tracked down. He, they are not letting him go. This is really interesting here as we take a peek over at Olympia Esports. Grabbing this high ground position. Doing a bit of scouting here. A little bumper cars. A little demolition derby. Nice. Trying to grab those sight lines off into the distance. Nice little, I like the fact that they're claiming Potato Hill early on, but you got Excuse on the other side, trying to hold this defilade here, and 
Yeah, they're gonna hold it for just a little bit longer. So looking at the map so far, everything is being pretty solid. Nothing too out of the ordinary. And right now, this is just that planning phase, PB. Gotta get ready for that next zone. Absolutely. Take a peek over at Excuse here. Again, this is one of the teams that actually made a brief appearance in the Premier Division last season. We got gas ups happening, but Olympia getting the opening knock here. Kai knocked and finished, and that is going to be one member down for excuse. Here we thought we were just watching these guys, you know, fuel up casually, and uh, very quickly they find themselves in a position of trouble. Olympia is starting to smell blood here. Oh, yeah, but they might get backstabbed here, so kind of a, kind of a crazy pull-up. Now you got 4K having to hold it down against Betty. Betty coming up with that DBS. Beautiful knock there. That's going to completely eliminate this player. But they do lose a couple of the process. Anyone's game here. I got to say, Jukes, uh, I like the knock much better than the finish. <laughs> a little true. cleaner on that first shot, man. He spent a few trying to clean that up. But Excuse crashing back here. They've got Alex down in the distance. And uh, right now, it's all about Olympia trying to save their knock teammate. So they're going to want to take this fight here in a hurry. I'm surprised Excuse didn't get that finish, though, because Alex is just giving their teammates all the sight lines <laughs> and information. And that is a, a telltale proof of it. You got to get your finishes, guys. If you don't, those squad mates are going to tell exactly where you are and beautifully done from Olympia. Absolutely. They... Uh... Make quick work there of uh, their opponent. That'll be excuse, I believe, headed back to the lobby. And Alex, it okay. looks like they're going to be able to pick him up here. They might actually be able to rescue him. They did lose one in the process of that fight. But Olympia now off to a fast start. I like uh, I like that for my predictions. But, oh, man, do we have a pull-up? It looks like a drive-by. I thought there might have been a pull-up. Smokes are out. Beautifully smoked, and honestly, that was a huge heads-up play from Alex. I guarantee you they wouldn't have got those finishes without him. I mean, he pinpointed exactly where those enemy players were, and it just helped out Olympia to get those finishes. So beautifully done, and that just goes to show you, right? One mistake can be the difference between end game or early game. Teams are on the uh, the rotate right now, and uh, it's getting interesting up near Yasnaya. We see some squads starting to collapse here, but until then, we've got XPE taking on Hell Crime here, and uh, this is an interesting fight taking place in Milta right now. Teams are split a bit awkwardly. We'll see if these guys choose to engage at the moment. Uh, I wouldn't. I think the zone's way too big here. Uh, maybe you could try and poke. A player here and there if you can. But this is a really risky one. You can just see, yeah, Hellcrime, they are full turtle mode. Just waiting for one, you know, little one little curious rabbit. Trying to <laughs> I wonder if loop. uh I wonder if XP knows they're there. Uh it's like space esports, I believe. X, X space. I don't know how to pronounce that. X P A C E. <laughs> like I don't know. I Whatever. We're gonna that. call them X P A X P E. That's that's what I'm rolling with here. So X P E Going up against Hellcrime, and I'm wondering if they even know they're there because you can see the Hellcrime members have been chilling, big chilling, not making a sound. Ooh. This is that fight up near Yasnaya that I was talking about developing. Stranger, uh, Strangers B actually rotated in from Stalber. They looted the northern part of the map and just rotated in. And they are going to be going up against Control right now. There's a bunch of teams, though, on this uh, southern side of Yasnaya that have started to gather. And it's about to uh, about to break out, Haju, because I think too many teams in too small of a space here. Yeah, these are the kind of fights that kind of really kind of make a question mark for me is, oh, we're going to see Dauntless try to drive on by Control. Not able to get the knock here. But yeah, this is that kind of fight that's always interesting because even if you get that knock, do you think Control is going to full send it on them? I have no idea what to make of any of these teams just yet. They they might, but you know the you know tra traditional wisdom, I would say no. They're probably going to trade some armor here, maybe crack a helmet, maybe, and uh, just live to to weaken the opponent. Maybe waste a little bit of ammunition. You can see Dauntless whizzing around still in the background. They're trying to find a spot <laughs> to call home, and Dauntless not able to do so just yet as this part of the map has been moved in on very quickly. Yeah, I mean, there's still a lot of room, though, available. A lot of different pl places to still take up, and you can see X-Pace doing the smart thing, leaving Milta, right? Just don't even get into that fight. Risk losing a player early on. Find a good spot in this next zone that you think that third, fourth circle is going to lock onto and just get ready for the rest of the match. Absolutely. 
live to fight another Got day. Got ruck headed into the zone uh, in the southwest part. They may be stumbling across illusion from the wanted vigilantes here. We'll see if they're, they're able to uh, actually survive. Yeah, nice. XPE driving. What is this? Is this the Koenigsegg? I believe so. Looking good. That carbon part of the body. Here's Ruck moving, and you can see Illusion off on their right flank there. Trying to make his way in undetected. He heard the, the vehicles and actually swerved out of the way, took a whole different line there. He'll head off again, trying to find himself somewhere to hide. But Batonajik, I, I, these names are going to be tough, man. I believe this is a uh, CIS team that is that is playing in Challenger, trying to make a name. And holy crap, they have uh, come out and started dominating. You can see Baton uh, JK, right? Chilling up at these reds. And uh, he's the scout for his team, obviously. Just pushing up little by little, trying to get a more central position for his squad. And that's where it looks like Ruck is going to claim home for now. Glad that they were able to do that a little earlier on. That is, oh, that's a really tough building to hold, though, especially if that zone pops off. It's really tough to keep your vehicles alive. It is indeed. I'm uh, I'm waiting okay, to see if anybody's going to go shelter. A little bit of split looting, just trying to get prepared for the rest of the game. Looking at their utility, they don't really have the best kit overall. Strangers BD is kind of in that same boat outside of this next circle. But I am really surprised to see Control really wanting to hold that position for so long the zone next zone does pop up pb what do you think about it i like it i'm still waiting for somebody to move into shelter man that compound that's oh. down there uh you know the underground no one has seen it just yet and it is wide open at the moment prison is still available mansion still available literally all of the main compounds in this final circle well, not the final circle but as this next zone pops no one's really moved in just yet so control starting to find a compound here they're gonna move into a house and uh, Bope is on the way in as well. Here we go. Looks like we're going to see Control uh, take Mansion. And it is completely free and clear soul. So that is really good for them. Rest of the team starting to make a rotation. Definitely noticing a lot slower rotations here in the Challenger division. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see this fight really, really slow down all the way into the end game a great point that you made just now with the uh the slower rotations that's one of the things you'll see in the premier division just the speed of the game oh is so much faster the second those circles pop almost all available compounds in the center of the map are uh, immediately occupied illusion here has been spotted out this man better hope his gas tank lasts as he is trying to find himself somewhere to call ah! home. he's going to be targeting a spot in the center of that map for sure but here we take our attention to bope and it is on they've got themselves contact out in the middle of nowhere I'm, I'm watching Illusion here on the map, and he is going straight to the middle of the zone and just trying to find a spot to call home. I think he's going to settle at the prison. That'd be a nice spot for him to take. Just, you know, try to hide in one of those little buildings. A lot of different areas you can hide in prison. So I would not be shocked if that's the place he decides to call home. So hopefully launches it off the top and gets to safety. But, you know, sometimes, PB, these kind of divisions with slower rotations can even be harder than at high-end gameplay, because at least rotationally-wise, because, like, for an example, we saw Control a little earlier on. In the Premier Division and higher tournaments, teams understand what's at stake. So if they're at the edge of the circle, sometimes both teams will just kind of shake hands and say, you know what, we, it's not worth taking this fight. Let's just push to the middle of the zone, and we'll fight then. And it's just better overall for both those squads. But here... A zone may change, and you may see one of those teams outside of the circle saying, nope, we're going to stay. Who cares if we go out in 13th place and only get two eliminations? That's our strategy. And it's plays like that that really change the entire play style and, you know, speed of this, this tournament. I'd love to go up to the lethal mentality in that northern part of the circle at the moment. Uh, they are going to be creeping in, and it's going to get hot. They're moving into that same area where there is a lot of teams chilling. Strangers BD are going to be uh, waiting for them. And uh, you mentioned it. Like, the teams have been slower to rotate. Uh, but this circle is is really wide open right now. Everyone's still kind of working their way in. A lot of teams playing edge. And here Lightworks getting into it again with Execute the Crash. Oh, but the gun skill too much. Way to hold it down. They said Execute said, uh-uh, that ain't going to work on us. Here comes Casper looking to apply a little bit more pressure. Ooh, almost spotted that headshot. 
And the, oh, just like that, he goes down. Bisky gonna have to make a 1v2 play happen. Can he do it? Ah, oh, he actually gets one, but not gonna be enough. Execute there with a great defense. We got one more on the flank. They might be looking for him. They go grab that flank, kill switch, and tally off on those off angles. You can see relax out there, zooming away with the buggy. They found him. Now they know that their teammates are going to be able to get back into the fight. Okay, next circle pops. Teams are on the rotate, and this is going to set Execute back a little bit. They're going to get some points here. Probably try to finish this fight with relax, but now they're going to be slow on the rotation just because they had to fight that uh, that light work team. 100%. So they're going to go ahead and get this last elimination here. Actually, relax is going to throw some smokes and look to get away with that buggy. Oh, that nade, though, really hurt. That buggy's in trouble. He ain't going nowhere. You ain't going nowhere. No, oh, he's better. He better get ready to relax because that's about all he's going to be able to do here in a moment as he's chilling in the lobby. Nice little good, that was a good, uh, good work from execute here. Nice little shark circle here. Oh, he gets a nice little headshot though. Oh, got him actually pretty lit, but beautifully done from execute. They're gonna take that a limb, patch themselves up. They only got 30 seconds left on the clock. That is enough time, and they do have a couple vehicles, so they should be fine on the next rotation as long as they don't make some dumb blind rotation full sending it in. Interesting uh, approach there from execute too. It was almost like no respect at all for the player holding that position. They just ran straight in with only two of them, too. They left two guys back, getting meted and patched up. They knew they'd be able to make light work of light work, and uh, they proved it on that one. That was interesting, though, uh, as we kind of watch these guys and their level of confidence. They were not, aside from that last game in Premier, all season long. You just didn't see that at I Execute here, and I like that they've come out and set the tone. They're tops right now in the lobby with five E-limbs uh, to start this game one. They have the gun skill. That's a fact, right? Uh, I think that when it comes to Execute, it's just overthinking, right? They try to do things that are just, they're biting off more than they could chew. They try these crazy splits and try to do these unique ways of winning the game, and I will say, right, some percentage of the time it does work, but I think we've seen as a whole, it really failed them. They just kind of got to go back to the basics, right? Just play together. You know, if you see something move, shoot at it. And in a division like this, you should be able to win it. This man's pan just saved his life. He did. He almost got right in the butt cheek. He, one more bullet. You can imagine if it would have clapped him in those cheeks. Unfortunately, uh, he would have been done. Iroh, though, will live to fight another day. Sure does. Here comes Hellcrime running straight out of the blue zone. Oh, missing a tire, too. That's going to be real slow, but definitely faster than on foot. And, uh, uh, yeah, this rotation is not looking good at all. Should be driving right into Bope here. Uh, yeah, but we're seeing teams, players go out like crazy now, PB. Olympia's uh, starting to pop off here a little bit. They're up to seven Elims right now, also leading the or lobby in damage. So Olympia, another team that we've uh, kind of called out as one to watch. They are proving it right now on the battlegrounds. Ruck has been a bit quiet so far. Three Elims thus far, but all four players still alive. So again, we're going to see in these next few circles uh, how things start to develop. And it was, I believe it was Dave who called out the Zombie Boys. He, he, he liked those wild horses, man, and they got some pretty good position right now in center zone. I think he could have nailed it. Here comes Ruck. They are outside of zone. The, they got one minute on the clock, and they're starting to push onto Dauntless. We're starting to see some trades go back and forth. Ruck seems to be playing this very, very tight, but we're seeing some of these squads do these blind rotations in the center zone and just get bodied. Getting bodies is right. Squads are starting to be eliminated left and right right now. We're down to the top 11 in the lobby. Dauntless getting patched up here as we take a peek at this uh, this circle. Fetty from Olympia. Oh, actually, here comes X-Pace with a full send on in. And they are going to be able to secure this shack, but this is still outside of the next zone. And they could be losing all their vehicles here in the next few seconds. Uh, it's really up to max split. This is could be their game to win. Got Max, great little ditch here that they're playing out of. Good sight lines onto everybody. And as long as they don't hate, you know, it's like whack-a-mole, right? As long as they don't put their head up too long, they're likely not to get whacked. But if they hang out too far, somebody's going to drop the hammer. Good shots here. That M16, absolutely deadly right now. Excision not able to get the knock, but does do a significant amount of damage, putting tons of pressure on both as they try to enter this circle. 
It's going to be tough for them to do that. Yeah, that's all you need to do, right? Just poke at them a little bit, pop up blue, and do the rest. You just want to apply that pressure. And we're seeing these late rotations coming in hot. Olympia, Alex, popping out, trying to take out the squad on the rotation. Meanwhile, Max Split still holding this ditch and just trying to hold it on for their life. Start to pop off now, man. There is nowhere to hide. This circle's getting tiny. And here comes the action. Grenade starting to rain in right now over the hill. Ooh, good shots. Hit the XPE pressure all sides of them right now. And they are hanging tough. I'd be really careful from that position. That is within nade range. But they're going to go ahead and smoke it out for now. They don't want to reduce all their sight lines. Nice nade there from Excision. They need to focus on one team at a time. Yeah, Pitless needs to get with his squad and full send this team. Here comes the send right now. XPE trying to hold the defense, unable to, and the line is broken. Max looking really solid right now. Beautifully done. I mean, seven eliminations. They are outside of this next zone, but they have plenty of time. They got vehicles. They're going to have to make that full push onto that central location. And you know who's in there? It's the zombie boys. Dave's pick. So can they hold on just a little bit longer? I, I love that the zombie boys are still holding strong right now in this circle. It's tiny. And we've got a few teams right now. We've got a top five developing. It's execute, max split, control, zombie boys, and Olympia Esports. I'm happy to report all of us have one of our picks alive still at this point. So liking what I'm seeing from the boys out on the battlegrounds. Beautifully done. Right now, I want to see zombie boys stand up. Okay, I want them to get highly aggressive here. They just want to really dominate this lobby. If they just keep this lay down strategy, they're going to let teams push up on them. They do spot Fetty. Get that quick knock, though. Beautifully done. Now we're starting to see that pressure from Zombie Boys. Something I'm waiting for. Execute hanging by a thread now as well. Lots of pressure coming out. Control hanging. Barely hanging on, man. It is getting absolutely crazy. Zombie Boys in full control. The only team with four players up right now. Rivas looking down the battlefield. And he's got sight lines. He connects from more knocks. And we are down to four teams. Take what? Four, three. Bang! Beautifully done. There goes Max Split out of there. And now it's just Control, Execute, and the Zombie Boys looking for their dub. Ooh, Zombie Boys. Julio firing those shots down range. He's, he's accurate, but unable to connect right there. Sprays into the smoke. Not able to land anything on to Execute right now. Execute will be happy with a high kill, top three finish in game number one here. They're setting the tone. Almost 2,000 damage so far here Ooh. in this first game. Executes coming out firing. 1,922 damage so far. It's only going to get bigger from here. They do have nine eliminations, so a heck of a start from the team that everybody is expecting to do well here. But can they pull out this chicken dinner? Honestly, Sequit is in a dangerous, dangerous spot for the zombie boys. He can really mess things up right now. His control is on this off angle. He's peeking. Can he get the knock? He does. Goes back to safety. Dude, he, he can team up right now with Execute to make things really, really difficult on the zombie boys. Now's the time to crash if you're Execute because they are out of the circle. You can see him starting to move in. OP crazy. Oh, he didn't need to. The nade. Now here comes Execute with that one knock is all it took. Oh, nice shot there from Memory Boy, but a good heads up play to instantly go back down. That that smoke right there in the middle takes away quit uh, sidelines as well, but it doesn't matter. These nades oh from Execute gosh. are deadly. They really are. Execute is mopping up right now. I dare say this was a 5v4 fight going into the finish here. Oh, Kill game. switch crashes, and it is down to the final member. And he connects, and just like that, Ooh. Execute taking home game number one. Winner, winner, chicken dinner for X. Disgusting. Over 2,500 damage. A ton of eliminations. This is the Execute we've been waiting to see. And to start off this strong is huge for them, PB, because it allows them to kind of take a little bit of a breath, right? Say, oh, okay, now feeling good. Let's just go ahead and go back to working on some stuff because now we have the room to do it. Talk to him, talked about him a lot heading into this game, Jukes, and I thought, you know, maybe we're talking about him a little bit much, but my gut told me, I'm like, 
we need to talk about him because yep. Execute, especially that final game of the premier qualifiers, they popped off. They had like 14 e lambs, didn't quite get the chicken, but that was the glimpse that I needed to say, okay, these guys might be back. This might be what they need to have happen to get that momentum going for the challenger finals. And just like that, they have popped off. So I'd love to bring back in our crew to talk about this one in more detail. I think it's just Dave. All right, we got Dave and Enigma coming back in. Yeah. Bring, bring us in, baby. Bring us in. I want to hear what they thought about this one. Uh, gentlemen, we got Dave. We got Enigma. Jukes is going to take a little breather for the moment. But, Dave, what did you think of that first game, dude? Uh, first of all, Zombie Boy showing up here. You'll love to see his Zombie Boys doing me proud here in game number one. Could they have gotten a little more limbs? Sure. But, listen. Maybe they made it to late game, and that's all that matters in my eyes. Love to see that. They made it to late game, but Dave, that is about all they did. Only picking up two elims, the zombie boys, and that whole big firefight towards the end. Enigma, what did you make of those circles in this first game? It seemed like it was kind of a no man's land. It's definitely not one of my favorites. We ever be in a zone like that, but I mean, we got to give like credit where credits due with execute you know they're one of those teams that played edge all of those zones on the west side and they had to fight virtually a team every single time they were trying to rotate in and ultimately at the end you know experience triumphs you know previous accomplishments with these challenger teams because execute absolutely slaughtered the zombie boys in that 4v4 at the end they really did. They got close enough to hit those grenades, and once they got close enough, they rained it down. Let's check out some of the action from our first game of the night. We got five more coming. I hope they're just like this one because it was absolutely crazy. It started early in this one with the wanted vigilantes going up against light work, and unfortunately for the vigilantes, Light Work did just that, make light work of them, taking down three of their team illusion, having to get away quick. And we also saw the likes of Olympia Esports come off really aggressive in this one. They put up a surprising amount of elims. They ended up finishing the round with nine. Dave, yeah. we saw this fight here kick off. What did you think of the split between Alex and the rest of his team there to get that one done? I mean, I'm not going to lie. I was kind of liking it. And going back to Olympia Esports, this is one of the most aggressive teams from the Challenger series, so it makes sense that they got a player out there looking to make plays, looking to make moves, and really get that off angle. So, honestly, I'm looking at Olympia to kind of continue that because game one, if I'm not mistaken, PB, they had nine elims. So, although Alex did get taken out right there, nine elims, that is a huge W, in my opinion, in only one game. Absolutely, it's massive. They came out and put up a fifth place finish, nine E limbs. And as we take it to the final circles here, I gotta say this max split team, pretty impressive to me. They chose that trench to kind of hide out in early, had some great pop shots down there, ultimately eliminated, but I like the showing that they have. And obviously the final circles here, we see kill switch raining down the mollies and the nades connecting with the zombie boys the zombie boys no match for execute here as execute takes away their first chicken dinner of the night and i say first because i fully expect them to pick up another one what say you enigma well i mean for sure they're all, the only team i've seen from the premier teams that actually you know showed up and played today i mean one vigilantes virtually lost everyone in the first minute of the game uh to these challenger teams and if we're looking at the scores you know with the the premier teams Execute was really the only team that was close to getting into that top 12 mark. So they definitely showed up. You know, they made a few roster swaps. I'm seeing Kill Switch and Telly out there. You know, I believe it'd be Telly IGLing them over Fake since he's not here. Um, but they're showing and playing. They really are. We saw Bope in that one as well. Didn't have a lot of focus on them, but I did notice that Bope Esports was playing Edge and the zone just kept running from them and they kept having to come down the hills and trying to fight their way in. It was not their match for sure. Bope finishing in seventh place in that first match. Definitely hoping to see more about those premier teams that have uh, found their way down. Dauntless got beat up a little bit in that one. And uh, just like you mentioned, some of the wanted vigilantes getting smacked around early. Ruck, not a huge performance in this one ninth place not bad but uh ultimately with how many points they came out with in the qualifiers i know that they were expecting more we'll have to wait and see what they're gonna do on miramar dave yeah let's go ahead and check out miramar as we uh are coming up here in about four minutes we've I want the Southern Zone, Dave. What do you think? We're going to get it? <laughs> we, we need it. All right. We need it. It is the Challenger Finals after all. So we need this zone. 
make it extra spicy over here. And going back to your point with Rook, it does look like all the players on the team each got one Elam. So to me, PB, they're just warming up, man. They still got five more games <laughs> to go. They're warming up. That was their warm-up map. Uh, and another important thing, they had those bonus points, right? Kind of rolling over into tonight. So I think with those bonus points, that can kind of afford a slow start to the day. But I need to see them start to turn up that heat here in this next match. That's a great point that you made. Honestly, these first couple of games, it's really about getting warm. It's about getting those repetitions and starting to find that confidence. And I think that was actually a really good game for a lot of teams because we saw a lot of fights. We saw not the greatest positioning and the greatest rotations from really anybody, uh, but we saw a lot of engagements. We saw a lot of gunplay. And that really makes me think that a lot of these teams got warmed up. And this second game in Miramar is going to be crazy. But got to give my uh, I got to give my pride Props here to kill switch from execute leading the lobby in kills for the first game kill switch living up to the name this man shutting the lights out of everyone in this lobby execute really had a had a, uh, a lot of momentum built early we go back to all the way at the south george crates enigma they got challenged early on do you think that you know when you get that challenge off the drop is that something that kind of helps build your confidence is that something you talk about kind of as a pro player i think it's not even really just talking about it it's more just you know that subconscious mindset each player has where you know it's the first game let's not you know lose the first one we take let's at least get some good damage and get the trade in i mean with kill switch we saw just as at the start of the game you know he won the 1v1 at the start unfortunately you know the rest of the team that he had killed they're kind of spread out at north george and stuff like that but i mean for kill switch you know he's a reputable player he's got that experience i think for him you know it's just another day in the bucks for getting that kill on the board love to see it and you got to shout out the rest of the players too uh looks like we got casper and uh, who is that, Azo up on the on the top of the, the standings as well. Three of the top four fraggers in that uh, game were all from the side of Execute. So, again, really strong showing from them. Uh, turning my attention, though, to Miramar, uh, I want to focus on some keys for the map. Again, we don't know where the plane path is going to be, where the zone's going to be. But, Dave, coming to you, what are some of the things that teams have got to be focused on on this desert map? It's much bigger than Aaron Gell. Uh, but, again, give us some keys to the desert here on Miramar. He's, well, first of all, we're hoping for the southern finish. We're going to the island. So, I mean, keys to that, get your boat ready for the boat tape and be the first team to make it to the island, right? Uh, so then you can shoot everybody like fish in a barrel. But if it doesn't go to the island, well, that's a whole other story. And another interesting storyline to follow here, PB, is there was four lobbies, right? Four lobbies for the Challenger uh, series, and they all kind of funneled into tonight's lobby. So I believe it was the top three from each of those lobbies will be competing here tonight. I think that kind of spices it up a little more because you didn't play one lobby with all these challenger teams to qualify. So it's kind of like a fresh lobby. So it really comes down to how much homework did these teams do? How much VOD review did they do here on Miramar? And do they know where these other squads drop or will they be surprised here in this Miramar game? That's a massive point that you just made, Dave. Again, with four different groups. We had group A, B, C, and D. All of these teams were literally facing their own set of competition, right? The top three have emerged. And Enigma, I want to ask you a quick question, you know, from the perspective of kind of a pro player. You know, you're doing homework. The the scouting that you're doing on these teams, the watching, uh, you know, any tapes or VOD review that you can do is obviously important. But say that doesn't exist. How does one find out where teams drop? You know what I mean? Like, it's like if there's a tournament taking place and I know that I like to drop in Picado, how do we know that two other teams aren't going to drop there as well? Well, you know, at that point, you're more so just taking a little coin and flipping it, seeing, you know, are we choosing to drop on our spot, the spot that we've practiced for months? You know, a lot of experienced teams, teams choose to do that. But for these lower end teams, they might just say, you know, let's just choose this spot. Let's look at the map afterwards of the stream that we just played be like okay someone dropped here this was free let's go to it because i mean if we look at the last match no one dropped yasnaya on erringill everyone you know was dropping melta we saw a lot of people going crates and stuff like that at george bowl uh gaka even had fights so it's a lot more of just you know if we're going to take the fight are we prepared to drop as a squad and clear out a side rotate around are we just going to force ourselves to take ones like kill switch had to i mean it's all just you know a matter of what that team's play style is 
Absolutely. So we uh, we've checked out the the teams on Aaron Gell. We have a good idea of who's kind of uh, doing what. So we're going to take a quick break. Get ready for game number two while these players get situated into the lobby. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes with Miramar action. We'll see you guys in just a minute. Oh, oh, what a Ooh. shot. Just the head. There goes one hot juke. Cat got popping up with the MG3. Peppering away right here. One. There's one. Back to 1v1. Cartman down really low with the team. Oh. And there goes Cat got for the win. And we're back, baby, getting ready for our second game. Miramar is coming up here in just a minute. I love those hype. Hype moments, Dave. I heard you in that trailer going absolutely <laughs> nuts. Let's go into predictions, right? We've got our second game uh, getting ready to fly in right now. We saw Execute dominate in the first game. Are they going to go back to back? I'm going to go to Enigma first. Enigma, give me your prediction here for this second game. I got to go with Max Split. I think the last game, you know, they had a lot of good positions, a lot of good kills they picked up. Just unfortunately at the end, a little bit of sloppy play. But, you know, with Miramar, I think they're going to come back and win it out. I like the pick. I really do. Dave, coming to you. Yeah, really solid pick, by the way. Uh, I'm still looking at Dauntless, man. I, I have to believe in Dauntless. There's only so many times I can call this squad to get the winner winner chicken dinner, and they disappoint. So I'm thinking game two is that game, PB. It has to be. It has to be. All right, Dave. I appreciate your loyalty. Uh, but at some point, those relentless picks kind of head into yeah. the realm of insanity, yeah. right? Doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. Let's hopefully Dave doesn't go insane here making predictions tonight. If I had to le levy one out, I would say I'm going to go with Olympia Esports. I really like what I saw from them in that first game. They got a bit caught out in the open there, but when it came to like actual gun skill and getting in those fights, they made pretty quick work of their opponents, even in shorthanded scenarios, and showed absolutely no fear in doing so. So Olympia Esports is my pick for the winner winner chicken dinner here on Miramar. But again, I got my eyes on execute, man. We'll see if they can go back to back. Uh, we are just about ready to drop in. So let's head on in to Miramar game two action coming up next. Send it boys. 
Hey, Miramar getting things underway, getting things ready to go. I was still looking at these stats here, Enigma. Zombie boys, they used 36 smokes in game number one. That's actually oh God. wild, man. They're just smoking up the place. But Miramar getting into it. What do you want to see here early game? Well, I mean, I'm wanting to see the boat. You know, we're all praying for that southern zone. But for the most part, I think I'm going to be seeing a lot of teams fighting off rip. A lot of this stuff's going to be, you know, depending on the plane path, there might only be three or four name spots on the map, whether it's people fighting for cars to try to, you know, rotate out, or if they're going to be landing, let's say, like El Pozo, there might be three or four teams on you. So, I mean, at this point, you know, I'm just looking to see a bloodbath right now. Yeah, it could be deadly. And a couple teams that we do not want to see uh, get uh, caught off right off the rip has to be excuse, you know, has to be light work. Uh, even Hellcrime, I'm looking at these teams that didn't really perform all that well in game number one. And I'm bringing this up because we only have five more games to go. After the five more games here, Enigma, top four is where you want to be to make it to the premier finals that's going to be happening here on Thursday. So not a lot of room for error here, in my opinion. Yeah, I think, too, you know, we're talking about, you said at the start, uh, earlier before the match, you know, we're going into with these teams that have qualified top three in their grouping from A, B, C, and D. But at this point, you know, we're not playing multiple games. We're not playing those 12, 16 games. This is only, you know, six games. You get the point reset. You only get, you know, a few bonus points. But if you really aren't feeling it today, those bonus points won't help you much at all in getting into that top four placement you need. Exactly. And, uh, you know, if you're one of these teams that, you know, you have a bad game and then you start to tilt or you start to point fingers and start to blame each other, you're just not going to make it. You're not going to make it here. So hopefully some of these teams that didn't perform to the top of their abilities in game number one, they just brush it off. They don't worry about it. Five more games to go. Keep your head in the game and look for that chicken dinner. And it looks like circle number one does go up there to the north, yeah. man. We're not going to get the PB special here. Well, you know, there's still the chance of it going to the wall all the way to the north of Miramar. A lot of people don't know that, but if you drive all the way up there, it's a border wall that goes all the way along the edge. But, I mean, we're seeing right now Olympia going to be flying in. This might just be a punch out on the road. <laughs> oh. I'd love to see that, but Kara, it looks like he's not going to opt for it. I think he got a shotgun. Lightwork fighting Bope right now, Legend. Oh, man, I think Bope got wiped by Lightwork last match, too. I guess yeah, so. Yeah, thing is, Lightwork, uh, what are we working with here? A shotgun, a couple grenades. Legend with the UMP lean peak and a couple shots off. Swap to the M249. Ooh. Almost catching a slug to the dome right there. Does, indeed. Let's see what their squad may can do in the back end with the Uzi here. Yeah, I mean, the nice thing, though, is Relax somehow doesn't get knocked on the cross, so he will be able to hopefully get the reset. The team comes in. Now, if Lightwork had lost a player there, they could have been disastrous because it means that two players are isolated on a cross. But Prophecy, you know, at least working in, they know where one boat player is, I think, on Jarek. Uh, but they're still, you know, wondering, where the hell are the other players at? They're all <laughs> rotating around on the ridges. Like, you're having to basically do a, a little bit of a guessing game on where these teams mm -hmm. are. And even we look at the map, too, there's another third team possibly coming into third party this. You know where they're at? They're getting their DBS lock and loaded, man. They're looking for the shotgun, the one-tap dirt nap. So light work still going to be up and in it here. Four up, one Elim in the pocket. Bope on the run now, just trying to survive. Now, it does look like there's three members of Bope who are going to be alive, but they don't want this smoke, man. They don't want this fight. Ooh. Then you got X Space Esports in the background and relax. <laughs> Telling them to relax with the DBS. Yeah, now look at this too. You know, this is one of the challenger teams, but they're looking like a premier team with how they're moving around the walls and the map right now because, I mean, they're making just complete light work of these teams. This is Bope. This is uh, one of the premier teams that got relegated to compete here in the six matches tonight. They did have five bonus points heading into. Uh, this lobby so they do have that working for them but what they don't have working for them here is uh, the numbers you know they're down two members here looks like they're finally going to be grouping up but light work they're not letting go here yeah i mean and the numbers are what matter at the end of the day because i mean if you'd go out here you know 16th place you've only got four more games and you're needing every game to count especially if you're at the bottom of the leaderboard 
I love that light work. They they see the target and they're not letting go. I love how they're just being so aggressive right now, just trying to get the full squad wipe, not really allowing Bope any time to think or come up with a new game plan. Right now, they're surrounding the compound. Light work, they, they got their head in the game here tonight, Enigma, and I am loving it. Yeah, I mean, you know, we were thinking that a lot of these premier teams would be showing up and playing, you know, like, I'm going to make sure all these lower teams don't do whatever. But, I mean, right now, I mean, uh -oh. Icrox gets one. They come down the stairs, but relax, saves his teammate. Uh -oh. be two action. Icrox, the, the last the one alive with the scar. Only three bullets in reserve. Does have 30 to let it rip. Now he's going to be making the push. There's Ooh. one, but the Molotov. <laughs> oh, oh, taking him down and out. His team just had so thrown close. the molly. He almost burned his own teammate alive. That would have been bad. Oh, oh look at this no. with the third party. X Space Esports showing up to the party. You know, and unfortunately, they only get one kill out of that. They didn't get the resets off in the building, but X Space, you know, at least is happy with one point. They get all the loot. You know, hey, you know, we don't have to chase people down in cars to try to get our own car spawns. Uh, X Base, you know, the team that we noted earlier coming up into the back, possibly third partying. They did it a little late, in my opinion, but at the end of the day, you know, with those knocks happening in the building, it ended up being perfect time. So, light work, Enigma, is that a W in your opinion? Oh, yeah, 100%. Okay. We've got a second Miramar match. I'm expecting no one else to be dropping there with them, and if you do, then expect that 4v4 fight. All right, small Ws is all it takes here. So light work, they are out. They had about 700 damage done with 40 limbs. So those 40 limbs, that's equivalent to a fourth place finish here. Uh, that they were pretty much able to acquire here very early on. Now, if we're talking about OP Esports though, ah, man, getting hunted down like that, getting taken out. Now, it was a close call at the end, right? But oh, uh, Enigma, you're the coach of Bope in this scenario. What are we telling the team heading into game number three? I think it's a lot of just, you know, like who is making these individual plays? Who's making calls? Is someone, you know, not saying a lot of things? Because when people start, you know, underperforming, they start either getting quiet or they're, you know, they're maybe overcoming too much or they're overthinking things. A lot of the time it's just being able to hit that button, you know, a little bit of a mental reset be hey you know just play it simple keep it safe and if someone on your team is feeling like we saw night crocs at the end there you know almost hitting two or three k's on the fight um it's a lot of you know just let's just play around this player if someone's feeling it let them mm -hmm. keep feeling it you know you can be that person that you know can uh, damage control or you But for the most part, you want that. You want to have a teammate that keeps popping off. And, you know, in previous experience, I've been around those people like Polo, used by an exit. He's one, one of the last two MVPs in PNPL Arabia in the CIS tournament. He's one of those players where it's just, if he's feeling it, let him do whatever he wants. Just make sure that he's not doing something where it's him running in the open, whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. and just try to work around and try to bring yourself back into the game to help him. Let him fly. Let him fly here. So, totally agree. Uh, let's see, though. Let's see what they can accomplish in match number three. See a couple people in the chat. These drops are wild. I have to agree. Welcome, everybody, by the way, tuning in to the Titan Series Season 2 Challenger Finals here. Things are just heating up. We're in match number two. We got a couple more games to go, but... Big shout out to everybody tuning in. Let us know who do you have picked to qualify? PB in the pre show asked a great question. Top four. PB was talking to you, chat. Wanted to know the top four. And we'll get to you here, Enigma, in a couple moments because I believe we need your four <laughs> picks as well. Of course. But in the meantime, I did see a fight out there in the distance. So before we get to that fight, give me your four picks, Enigma. It's got to be Execute going with Rucker. You know, they didn't perform well last game, but XQ, Rucker, got to look at Hellcrime and Olympia Esports. Okay, I like how we align on some of these. Uh, definitely a respect. Not picking Zombie Boys, though, man. And I'm talking about <laughs> Zombie Boys. I see them out there in the distance now. 
only two elims, but they did show up in the late game. So right now, let's see. They are definitely going to be tested. Uh, Strangers BD looking to take the fight with my zombie oh. boys. And already one of the boys down and out. But crazy with the quick return fire was able to connect onto one Strangers BD, but then quickly tagged and bagged themselves. Yeah, I mean, it got down to just essentially the 1v1 on the hill. If he wins that, he probably wins the fight best. He, you know, coming up, getting at least three of them now. Zombie boys. I'm not sure if he just even disengaged from this fight and tried to go for placement, or if he tried to pick up these remaining kills and just, you know, go out with two or three on your belt. Looks like they're going to be able to get the revive here. F's in the chat for zombie boys. By the way, someone in the chat said we need the DBS emoji in the chat i that's a good agree one more we'll, we'll, we'll work on that we'll work on that so looks like wanted vigilantes looking to third party this fight over here a lot of third partying happening this evening here enigma i mean they're picking a little few freebies right now they did move back a little bestie but i mean we're seeing off in the distance too a lot of teams here in the commotion control off and to the edge i'm not sure if wanted vigilantes will want to push this compound it does not seem like something I want to do, but execute Telly taking some shots on Illusion from downtown. I'd like to see him maybe even get a knock here. Execute is definitely one of those teams I would want to push to one of Vigilantes if they get the knock, but doesn't seem like the case just yet. It's going to live a little bit, but I mean, a lot of these teams, you know, one of Vigilantes, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing the plays come together a little bit, but ultimately it's just fumbling a bit. And even Casper just now getting a knock. Oh no, that's on the hill. Even the thirst execute just, you know, showing just a, a different class of play compared to even the, the premier teams right now in the lobby. Yeah, I, I mean, execute game one just dominating. So it's kind of hard to uh, put a halt to that momentum. You know, I'm a true believer in the momentum meter. And honestly, the only thing that can stop execute, in my opinion, is like a team hot dropping them and wiping them out early. But doesn't look like that's going to be the case here as we do see them in the feed continuing to get some knocks out there in the distance as other squads are just looking to turtle up and find a compound to call home for the time being. Yeah, the zone shift too, you know, we'd seen a little bit. Some teams on the edge, some people, you know, still working and slowly execute, starting to move up, trying to find these last players on water vigilantes. They know they're confident, you know, it's a 4v2 if we crash them. I'll just make sure it's them sort of thing. And I think they have an idea. They might just try to rotate back to go for the next zone shift. But I could see XQ going just straight east and fighting these kids at the compound. But Fishy, <laughs> out of here. Out of here. So want the Vigilantes, they did lose two of their squad mates here. They have two elims as well. And they're still making some noise out here. They have a nice little buffer between them and everybody else here. Enigma. I do appreciate uh, hey. how they're not just, you know, they're not just snaking it. You know, they're trying to inflict damage on their opponents. They're trying to get knocks. They're trying to pop tires. I do appreciate that here. Appreciate the best, of course. But, I mean, with that, it's a lot of just, you know, if it's one of these teams, like, execute and they know where you're at, it's a little bit scary because they know, hey, you're two-man. But every other team doesn't know you're two-man. Mm -hmm. don't know unless they finish you so a lot of the time it's you know maybe reposition and just play loud just start shooting anything that comes by that was an old pc strat i was told about actually when the game first dropped where people would prone in a building and not even peek and just start full spraying uh you know a lot of you know a little bit of a unique play coming out mm -hmm. the differences between pc and mobile but mobile for sure you know just having a lot more just action in my opinion a lot more you know just outplay potential and a lot of the stuff i mean casper just Rocker. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Big fight. This is a big fight here. So it looks like Executor just kind of out here uh, roaming the terrain, looking for fights, looking for elims. And it looks like they did pick up the scent of Ruck over here on the edge of the southwest. They did take some warning shots there. Direction. It looks like Ruck pulled off just a little bit. As now Execute are going to be piling up uh, in the hardcover. So both these teams are definitely aware of each other. And uh, looking at the map here, they have a nice buffer between them and everybody else. So I'm really curious if we will see these two teams fight. But meanwhile, in the north, it is just a cluster. It's a mad dash. There's about four different teams all looking to rotate and find a position here to call home. 
you know, it's looking like death race on that north road. There was three or four teams, Olympia Esports, we got Hellcrime coming in. And it's a lot of just, you know, if you go straight down the road, you're going to start driving by teams just full spraying you. You might have people jumping out of their cars trying to shoot you. So, I mean, it could just be a bloodbath on these northern compounds. Yeah, it looks like uh, Excuse are going to be pulling up into water treatment. I uh, believe X Space also have a nice little centralized uh, position across the road. Strangers uh, BD. So, there's a lot of teams who were able to rotate early on in a solid spot for the time being. My only fear is you don't want to get too comfortable because then you might be in the same situation like we saw Zombie Boys game one where, sure, you make it to the late game, but you only have two E limbs. To me, Enigma, that's just not enough here because we only have six games in total and you need to be top four. Yeah, I think a lot of it's just going to come down to what my old team we used to have as, you know, we're wanting a minimum amount of points or an average amount of points per game, whether it's 7, 10, 12. Obviously, that number has changed if I was to be playing with all the placement changes being made where it's more kill oriented. But at that point, you know, you're setting the bar for your team. Maybe it's just we're going to at least wipe out one squad, get those four points. The placements, you know, could be ranging from zero to ten if you're to win the game or not. You know, Zombie Boys had the potential last game of just at least winning with possibly five, seven kills. Um, but with this, I think a, a lot of these teams should start implementing ideas of, you know, let's not tilt. We're just one game off of being, you know, in that top three, especially with these kill formats. And let's not be afraid to take some fights. Definitely. That's the key right there. Not to be afraid to take the fights. And so far, only really one team has uh, been demonstrating that. And that's Execute here. And for good reason, game one, they dominated. So execute now on the edge, still in the standoff with Rook. Uh, we did see the solo boy from Zombie Boy still alive the right boy. there on the edge. The boy. <laughs> yeah. The boy. Oh, and the one boy right there on the edge. But thankfully still in the circle. So they don't need to move for the time being. I'm still waiting for the northern half of uh, this, this zone to to start to heat up because you mentioned there's only so many roads so many pathways in up there that we're bound to get a fight but this is a big one it's fate with the m4 Looking i mean it's record this. two quiet the first game they had a pretty decent position holding the east side but that shift down into the south of essentially mansion kind of you know just destroyed them on their next rotation but who did fate replace by the way because fate didn't play in um game. i think it was aza or okay. telly okay I'm seeing two or three of the four names, but... Oh! Boom, boom! Surprise! <laughs> oh, there's a DBS for you. <laughs> yeah, but unfortunately, now down to just the one. A little bit of a third-party action again going on. Max, though, almost going to be making the grasp of the situation, being able to actually get in on that west side. They were being gate-kept, it seemed. Extreme Rage. Putting mm -hmm. essentially a little bit of a sandwich spot going on onto the team. They just third party, but I mean, Ala could be in a spot to just get an opening pick and just like say, hey, let's just keep fighting people. Go for the there spray! Oh. Yeah, there we go. That's what I was waiting for. With those, those big monster trucks, you gotta go for that spray. Oh, Ooh. the precision here. You have to go for this spray. You have to try to pop those tires, really. There's a moving target out there. So, Extreme Rage, three. Elim still four up. Now they do need to think about their game plan on how they're going to make it into that next circle. And we already see a couple teams looking in their direction. I believe that's Hellcrime over there. Uh, they got about three Ooh. different teams all just trying to pick them apart here in the open. Yeah, and we're just down to the only Hellcrime players still, you know, staying back, getting a potentially, you know, free point on a viral. Really going to be punching himself over that, but. I mean, I would have liked to see Extreme just possibly just full send it on a max, take that 3v4 fight, and now alt getting knocked up the hillside, or actually just below towards max split. And this is just sending like a disaster for Extreme. Yeah, I think it's going to be a disaster for all these squads, honestly, because we have excuse in water treatment that is in the zone, and they're going to be looking over here in this general direction. So they're just going to have easy pickings, honestly, on any of these teams uh, looking to late rotate. And here, here's a prime example. Let's see what they can accomplish oh. here. They got a point going right to their doorstep. They can't let it slip through their fingers, but over here, lethal mentality. Okay, looking for a pull-up here, Enigma. Oh, oh got him. 
Gets the one. I mean, uh, he's isolated out the Olympia player. There's just two in the compound. They need to be moving forward on this before the rest of Lethal Mentality pulls up. They already have, actually. And I think Olympia might need, honestly need to just run away from this compound. They're going to be getting slaughtered here. Yeah, yeah. See a couple smokes on the uh, the battlefield here. It looks like we are going to be able to get our squad mates back in. The action here in Olympia looks like they're taking your advice. The duo that is still alive with their two Elims currently running away here. Extreme range though, got a little one one action. A little pre fire Ooh. from the doorway. 18 bullets now down to 14, but the cover fire, they're coming in to clean up here. The last remaining member of Extreme Range can't catch me. That's what they said. Now they got three members on them on the hunt down. We see the grenades, oh. the spray down. There's one. Can we get another? No bullets! Ooh. Oh, only 11 bullets left in the M4. Running low on the ammunition. An excuse, man. Talk about playing a ring around the rosy. Yeah, I mean, that first match, excuse, was getting a little bit of ring around the rosy themselves. They were holding an eastern compound of Potato Hill and just essentially let a team full up, full drive up onto them, drive a buggy around, and just get opening knocks. So good of them to at least be able to clean this fight up without losing Kai. He did, hmm. unfortunately, not lose the 1v1. Yeah. We'll edit that out of the montage. Yeah, I yeah, edit it out the montage. Yeah, blur it out, you know? Yep. Put it as someone else's name. It's not you. It was our old teammate <laughs> yeah. you replaced. It wasn't wasn't anything crazy, but Olympia crazy. now having to fight Lethal. They got one kill on the Lethal mentality on the push-up, but he was just a 1v2. Definitely yeah. possible for Olympia. They were the team that, you know, seemed to be one of the most aggressive teams in the lobby in the first match. Just a little unfortunate with the placement, but he gets one. It's one v one with the S12. We got him. Got to chase him. Oh, oh, the third party from downtown. Oh, the beam. Man. The laser beam. The laser Max. beam. Uh, next circle did go up, too, by the way. And guess who is favored? Of course. Uh, of course. Execute. <laughs> the team that needed it the most. Execute are going to be in it to win it. I love how they got uh, a 2 2 split going on right now as well. Pretty much a duo looking to the north and a duo looking to the east side so to me this is execute looking to farm here as squads start to rotate in this very small zone yeah i mean if we're looking at Aspen's pov or at least when the map was up that whole field is essentially flat there's maybe one or two rocks and everyone else is playing the edge either on the lip of the road or they're at that compound on the edge where uh, i believe it's b star uh, but everyone else is going to essentially i think just be fighting for this northern side where there's that big ridge and it's just going to be an absolute bloodbath. So I'd like to see if the team at the compound there. Uh, but okay. I don't know. Max Split pulling oh. up. That's one. There's another one there. And they're just full spraying in the smokes. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I don't blame them. What, what a mess here, man. Just full spraying with the M4. Full. Hey, we got to reload here. Reload. Full spraying with the M249. Two of the smokes. They saw the monster truck. And they Whoa. just let that one rip. Now we still got the solo in the smoke, snaking out, DBS popping up, connecting, getting one. But couldn't finish what they started. I mean, it was a tall order, of course, but uh, there we go. What a, what an interesting little pull up right there from the Max zone Split. Was, the zone was making it a little scary for him. I thought, you know, the, the Rucker's nade when he was going to throw was going to actually, you know, possibly just get a four man wipe because everyone was heating zone, but. Thankfully, the rest of them, you know, got in a buggy, started spreading out. But excuse, maybe making the push into the compound. This might be the hero play from Rosh getting that knock with the nade. Well, Senna Quit's got a pretty good off angle on the side, but I don't think they're going to be rotating around to the middle of the compound. Comes control, trying to defend the push right now. Cuffy cooking a grenade, tossing it Ooh. off into the barrel. Now on the hunt there, trying to get the pre fire through the doorway to connect in the backside. But Rosh! Oh! Getting caught in the trap right there, Enigma. Oh, but who is this? I believe it's X Space. X Space. Oh, I'm making the pull up right now. Quit. I don't think they know where he's at in the truck, so he might be able to just snake it out. But look at this. We're having Max as well. There's four teams at just this compound alone, Dave. <laughs> yeah, and like what a random spot, by the way. It's just one little compound. Well, a nice little compound, and then barren terrain around it so you can see from a mile away who's going to be pulling up and looks like a couple squads will be here so it looks like quit was spotted in the back seat of the dumpster as uh now excuse with the trio looking to take the fight up against the four person 
team of X space. And I think you're just now putting together that it's not the solo left on the left, but a full four man team. Cuffy, he's got a pretty good angle. He's actually just waiting. I'm loving this play. It's not even shooting yet. Is that three non players on the left execute side of the zone? Execute this, man. Execute. Execute. They only got a duo, right? But uh, they don't need to really fight anybody. They can just let the teams in the compound fight it out. And eventually, you have to assume the next circle is going to push them all out. Whoa. But Cuffy! My goodness. <laughs> that was close. You got the one, but I mean, this gives time oh, for that's Execute smart. now. He's giving time for Execute now to run up. Casper was the only one not in zone. I'd like to see him move up towards Max Blitz Shack. And possibly clear that out. That's the only spot that could actually really screw over execute in this win for the match. But oh, Chobi. it really comes down to how many slow. smokes you have too. Like regardless of who wins this uh, this compound fight, oh, how many smokes they have because X space they need to make the pull out. It does look like Casper took that moment to push up behind the crate, loot the level three gear, and also use it for cover. Very smart move right there with the timing. Yeah, a little bit of armor swap going on. Kill switch even has full three gear, full utility, three frags. Probably come into play later on if they do the have smokes. The back to back. This is the back to back. I was feeling it, but I didn't want to say it. Like at the start, I'm like, you know, I got to go with a different team on the win. <laughs> and now I'm, now I'm, you know, kicking myself ten times oh, over. Man. Same, same, same. Yeah, yeah, totally same. Casper with the Bob Barker. Casper needs to make sure not to get here. Oh! Now they got the three-person unit. Yeah, there goes Casper getting naded. Oh, that that's uh that one hurts. And X Space hey. making the push now to claim the position that Casper was holding down. But don't underestimate. We still got a solo out there from the Max Shark. Flick. I don't think they know he's in there. Oh, now, they do. now they do. Now they do. Now they do. Switch got a peek and help him out. The two v three is helping you out. Oh no. I don't think they're good enough to hit it through the shack. I hated trying to Kobe Nates through shacks. Those little windows, they bounce back, your teammates on it, and you just absolutely just kill your teammate. That is not. There's still part not, of me that move. thinks Kill Switch can win this. I, I don't know why. There's just something in me that believes. Kill Switch, no more grenades, one more Molotov, a couple more smokes. Does have this bowler to work with, but now we need to make the push here. It's going to be Ooh. a tall ask because you got three members of X space looking right at your boulder. It's really up to the solo from Max Split to play spoiler right now. Yeah, I think he's able to maybe get one. Kill switch will probably have to go for some sort of FPP play in the smoke. Try to, you know, just timing, reaction. These players, but he's go. going for it right in the go. open. Good gets one. one. Going back to smoke for cover. A little smoke bit of time 50 left. 50% dissipated. There goes the solo from Max Split. Now it's a 1v2. Casper has the health advantage in the field, oh. in the open. UMP spray down. Kill switch can't take it down in second place. X Space Esports taking the winner, winner, chicken dinner. Dinner for sure. I mean, they were slaughtering at the end there with all those teams coming in. The only team, you know, that had just any sort of players alive, Execute, probably could have had that win if they had more players up. But as you said, you know, they're a duo. A zone didn't keep shifting to the road, but I think they're happy with that performance. Yeah, very happy. I mean, they still got a bunch of points to go along with their game number one performance. And uh, X Space definitely needing that. 60 limbs, if I'm not mistaken, plus the winner wear chicken dinner. So that's like 16 points right there. Well, Max Split, my dude in the shack, man, just holding it down until at least the third place finish. Yeah, I mean, you know, thankfully he was able to stay in the zone in the shack. But, I mean, shout out to him. He got, you know, good damage in. He had picked up a few extra placement points for his team. And I think, you know, his team's just like, you know, round of applause. Good job. You got top three. And, I mean, just go next game, I guess. Let's bring back PB because during that game, PB said, listen, zombie boys, oof. Uh, PB, come on. That's the zombie boys we're talking about, man. What's going on? <laughs> I'm sorry, Dave. It was uh, something about just standing up completely erect, looking in a complete different direction as somebody whizzed up right next to them and was just like, I'm like, oh, no, the situational awareness is just not on point. And they just got picked apart like crazy. So for me... The zombie boys pick. I don't know, man. I don't know. But I got to say, I was with you guys. You were talking like, oh, I wanted to pick execute again. 
I was like, I don't want to homer this too bad and say, hey, these guys are going to go back to back. But I wanted to pick them as well. They came out, performed once again, execute top damage, top limbs in the lobby. And, uh, you know, interesting as that game was kind of wrapping up, there was four teams in that compound all fighting each other. And execution just kind of laughing on the outskirts there. So pretty impressive from them to, again, have a dominant uh, finish. But what about light work, man? Getting out once again active as heck, Dave. Yeah, light work, uh, putting in work, I guess you could say. Four points going their way when it comes to the Elim points and uh, relax with three of those. So I did appreciate how, I know they got taken out early, PB, but I appreciate how they're so aggressive, you know? You could feel the energy just radiating from that squad. And honestly, I would not want to be a team dropping near them because you know they're going to take the fight here, PB. They really are. You mentioned it. Uh, four Elims, and honestly, they're in the top half of the damage output for all of these teams, and they were eliminated very early on in this one. So light work continuing to be active. Bope Esports has work to do. They went out first in this game, uh, falling victim to light work, to be honest with you, and ultimately wanting to see more from some of these premier teams. Wanted Vigilantes, Dauntless, and Bope finishing in the bottom half of the standings right now, but once again, execute the story so far. Absolutely delivering right now with nine Elims this uh, this second game. But I'm going to throw to you, Enigma. Uh, Max Split, you picked them to win this game, and honestly, they look pretty good. They had some great pull-ups. This fight right here against Ruck on the outskirts here for position. They got the win. What are you thinking so far of Max Split? You know, they're looking good. Unfortunately, that last player on Rucker really was just a sore on their side because if you see here right in the replay, there's no smokes out farther down. They're just going to get completely peppered through the smokes. And they actually even jumped out of their own car. So a lot of it just came down to that one play that possibly, you know, cost them a third place to a first place. What a kill right Here's there. that compound I was talking about. Look at this. Oh, There's four gosh. squads here just fighting each other. And if you check the mini-map, there's exit <laughs> on the outskirts there in purple. Just looking out there, uh, you know, like, yeah, we'll just take this rock. This is fine. You guys just go ahead and duke it out. And, and what's so impressive is that somehow, some way, x Space survived all that. You know, they had all the cards stacked against them. Everybody was looking in their windows, tossing grenades at them, pre-firing that little garage, throwing Molotovs but they still survived here to make it to this play right here to even have the potential to, to get the chicken. Got to give a shout out though to X-Base. You know, Dave, I really like how they got that nade kill and all three of them were locked in in unison, pushing out of that building, securing that crate and that hay bale out in the middle of nowhere in no man's land. Really nice job for them uh, to secure that and really take control of this uh, chicken dinner. That was all them on the offensive there. They were not given that game. They took it and execute, uh, picking up another second place with nine Elims, so they got to like their outcome there as well. You saw Sandhawk on its way up next. We're going to get this lobby locked and loaded. We'll be back in just a minute with more of this Challenger Finals action.
Oh, baby, we are ready for the jungle. We got Hot Jukes and Dave coming back in. We're turning our sights to Sanha coming up next. The teams are getting their strats together. Hot Jukes, if you had to tell them what strats to put together, what are you giving the advice on for Sanha coming up next? Ooh, uh, right now, I would say get on your knees and just say, Papa Blue, please, right? Love us here because i think it's going to take a good old-fashioned blessing i've seen the way these teams rotate they like to go with some of those little slower rotations and that is not going to fly in sandhawk so i think if you get that zone stand up straight take advantage of it bust out a chicken dinner with some serious eliminations and this could be that chance for one of those squads that's been struggling to do that and possibly make it into that top four I like it. My key to this map is Paradise Resort, man. I feel like there's only like one team that usually drops there and it's kind of wide open, but it's almost always in the circle, at least in this first zone. And it doesn't shift super far away uh, to start things off. So I'm keying on Paradise Resort nice. to kick off Sandhawk. Dave, what about you, man? Where are you looking? Uh, listen, I'm trying to relax. I'm trying to chill. I'm going somewhere on the coastline. I'm going maybe to the docks where they got the nice little chair set up and I could just sit back, relax here, PB. That's where I'm going. And you know who else should be going there? One of these bottom teams who, uh, keep running into squads, uh, that are on the hunt and, uh, you know, light work, they're hunting down Bope. So if I'm Bope, two back-to-back kind of poor performances, I'm looking at Big Chill and just play some PUBG Mobile, honestly, and survive a little longer. Maybe they can get like a moral victory, just parachute into the cave and, you know, <laughs> yes, switch no all that like a basketball game or something. You know, I, I don't know. Cave doesn't get enough love, man. I yes. like the cave. Play a little ups and downs and whatnot. We'll see the rotates. And I'm curious to see who drops boot camp because it's usually one of the more aggressive teams in the lobby. If I had to put my money on it based on what I've seen so far, I've got two teams in mind that are taking boot camp. One of them is Olympia Esports. The other one of them is Lightwork. Ooh. I want to see if one of those predictions is correct uh, for somebody that's going to go boot camp. I'm thinking execute probably camp alpha up in that Northwest hot jukes. Uh, you know, what are you thinking for execute? Is that kind of where we've seen them in premier? Uh, yeah, they normally land in that Northwest side, right? So that Island off to that side on that North upper left side of the map. So if the zone does go in that area, they're just like an automatic contender to just bust out some serious points. Um, so I'm expecting them to kind of just stick with that plan because honestly, I always say this, right? You want to stay consistent and land in an area where you feel you're going to compete, not just in the Titan series, but in future tournaments, right? You want to be able to get that work in those reps. So uh, that's where I'm expecting execute to go. That's one of the interesting things about this particular tournament, obviously, is all the premier games have been broadcast the past three weeks and even three seasons, right, that we've been playing this season zero, season one and season two. There's a lot of footage out there. And I think many people, if they've been paying attention or done their VOD review, they know that Execute's going to land up at Camp Alpha mm -hmm. and kind of own that island. The interesting thing about some of these challenger teams, the ones that are on the come up, right, there's not as much known about their tactics, about their strategy, about their rotations. And, you know, like I'm thinking of N Hyper, right? Dropping in the southern part of the map, you know, they're going to kind of rotate up. Well, it's like, who knows? That whole part of the map, we have no idea what's about to happen. And I'm curious to see how many people drop on each other here. And if there is some sort of, I don't know, agreement or, uh, you know, gentleman's handshake that's happening to kind of give drop spots to one another. But Dave, yeah. uh, what do you think, man? What do you, what do yeah. you think is going to happen here with all of these teams? Listen, I, I like where you're going. I, and by the way, after the end of my point, I got a, I got a question for you, all right? I want to throw it back to you. But uh, going back to the question at hand, I'm looking for the sleeper picks. You know, I'm looking for <laughs> that team that nobody believes in. I'm looking for that team that barely qualified to get here. Um, a team that doesn't have a lot of VOD footage on them, like you said, for other squads to really study and try to learn from their previous games. I'm looking at the Zombie Boys, man. I think the Zombie Boys are the sleeper pick here in the lobby. If there was a team to really surprise everybody, it has to be my Zombie Boys. Now, I see PB shaking here. Listen, watch. Sandhawk, watch. Zombie Boys are showing up, all right? But PB, I'm tossing it back to you because you said something about two teams, Lightwork and Olympia. You want to see them drop boot camp. I want to ask you the hard question. Say those two teams drop boot camp, who's walking out alive? 
I got to say Olympia. Uh, they showed some ingenuity on uh, this last game, got into a bit of trouble, and actually made it quite a bit further than they probably should have, avoided some team fights, and ultimately they were able to third party uh, that fight between Max Split and Ruck. And so I like the ingenuity of Olympia. Light work. They're a rough and tumble bunch from what we've seen so far through two games. They're not afraid to get into it, but I feel like they're a bit more, you know what? Brute force, we're going to fight to the death, leave it all out here on the line, and that might work for a fight. Let's let's say that Olympia takes it 7 out of 10 times. That's that's the uh, statistical breakdown from me uh, on the boot camp fight here. But hey, who knows if we'll even see that at all. I have no idea. But another team that I'm keeping my eye out on for this game is Control. I'm going to actually pick them uh -huh. as my uh -huh. prediction to win here on Sandhawk. Dave, give me your prediction for uh actually let's go with jukes because me and you dave are casting this yeah, game yeah, yeah. jukes give me your prediction oh uh, why not we go with hell crime hell crime do something special make it a show baby let's go let's get it hell crime for hot jukes hot jukes will join you in just a bit but me and dave hopping into sandhawk now mustache dave give me your prediction for the map yeah yeah so you're you're calling control that, that's a good one hot juice going with hell crime i can kind of see it if i squint and look a little closer but uh for me i'm thinking max split man we saw them last game just straight up pull up in a couple buggies just letting it rip with the m249 we saw them in game one also get what 70 limbs so max split they're due for a winner wearing chicken dinner I like the pick, Dave. Max Blitz has been one of the, the teams for me. You know, I didn't know a lot about them coming into the game, uh, but they have been probably the most impressive team for me as far as rotation, position, overall just taking fights and whatnot. Again, it hasn't served them uh, with a chicken dinner just yet, but, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see as this uh, tournament continues to develop. We are into game number three out of six tonight, the Titan Series Challenger Finals are fully underway and uh i mentioned boot camp and um uh, <laughs> yeah nobody oh what? man nobody that's good man not even zombie boys come on I would have and, and execute has, has switched it up too look at them they're going down to ruins it looks like this is an interesting uh drop not at all what i predicted with the exception of paradise resort it is popping off there yeah, it looks like uh, it's going to be X-Space Esports already looking to take some shots here in the bottom right here in the corner. But going to Paradise, uh, we got, yeah, that's going to be Excuse running away. So it looks like those uh, quick little pot shots from Light Work scaring them off right here, PB. Light Work getting into it early. Man, it's like their MO, dude. It's like, let's fight. Let's fight now. Let's fight often. And let's keep fighting while we're fighting. Like, they're really getting into it here. I, I like it little split drop here from uh Bop in that northeast and here is the circle again it's it, wow this is an interesting one because look at the edge play that's going to have to happen both in the northwest the north the northeast the whole middle part of this circle and the east is all empty like there's no yeah. teams there's only two that are really controlling that whole southern side right now so this is going to be an interesting circle to watch develop yeah there's a ton of real estate available and it looks like uh one team looking a big chill lethal mentality the duo going to docks so shout out to them for dropping docks you'll love to see it but uh here's control looks like control might be uh in a little skirmish themselves here it's going to be in camp bravo looks like both teams are setting up for a skirmish control Player players, Cuffy, looking to gather as much intel as possible right here and maybe even catch Strangers BD off guard. I got to give a shout out to Strangers BD. They've been impressive so far as well. They've been in a lot of fights, a lot of action so far. Haven't picked up a lot of elims as a result of it. The teams they've been into it with have been able to patch themselves up or got third partied and ultimately took points off the board for Strangers BD. But Strangers actually looking pretty strong so far this tournament. I got to give shouts to him as, uh, you know, the best logo in the lobby. I, I personally like that orange, you know, dragon thing. I don't know what okay. it is, but I like it. Okay. I feel it. I feel it. Yeah. Game one, they didn't really show up, but game number two, they definitely performed a lot better. So uh, I believe they were able to acquire some much needed confidence and we'll see how that rolls over into this lobby. But we're talking about confidence. We got to look at X-Space Esports because they won up against Execute in game now. Number two, now they're making a push here. You mentioned the big Mo, Dave, and the momentum is building for X-Base. They picked one off of Ruck early on, and this one, Ruck already down to three members. 
And, uh, ooh, good jump right there on this fight. Oh, look at this. He gets two. The confirm. Uh, Holy cow. Is he going to get... <laughs> the momentum. He... Uh, stopper, TB. That's, that's it right there. That guy is just absolutely Mount Everest right there on the top of this uh, this building, man. Absolutely crushing X-Base and any hopes they had of winning that confrontation. You can see Unknown and his teammate just running as fast as possible in the opposite direction as they have uh, lost their advantage in this one. It's gone from a 4v3 to now a 3v2, not in their favor. Ruck needing that badly as uh, they did not start this one the way they were hoping. Uh, looks like Hatin will be theirs for the time being. Yeah, very interesting. Like you said, they were able to get one knock and confirm. So it was a 4v3, but instead of using their, their numbers advantage, they just sent two in to investigate. So in that situation, I think you just play as a four-man unit, try to clear out every single corner, every single closet, and just you know flush out the team. But that's just not what they, what they did right there. So they paid the ultimate price. Now, they're still going to be alive, so we'll see what the duo can do. Uh, honestly, I think just surviving to late game might be the goal. Uh, they are going to need to watch out, though, because they're running towards a couple teams who are set up. Might even be looking in this direction, but uh, we'll keep tabs. We'll keep tabs on. We got a fight brewing right now with Hell Crime and Execute. It is on like Donkey Kong. Got uh, Execute oh, catching Hell Crime in rotation right now. And look at that jump right into the rock. Onyx. Uh, well, that was a boo boo. He tried yeah. to uh, make it across and now he's stranded. Hell Crime in a bit of trouble here. Execute smells blood in the water. <laughs> Jimmy they are Jinx. collapsing. Yeah, Jimmy and Jinx just, they're just gone. You know, they left Onyx over here to fend for themselves here, PB. I feel like they're driving vehicles with no rear view mirrors, Dave. They're just kind of out for a joyride, hair, hair kind of blowing in the wind. They don't recognize that Onyx has wrecked his vehicle at the top of this ridge, and now he's pinned from two angles. This is like a proper chess match right now. Casper catches Jimmy on the off angle before he's able to set up a flanking position, and Jimmy has been run off. They still have Onyx pinned here. Yeah, Casper just asserting dominance over here in the south, making sure the Hellcrime can't turn back and get the pickup on to Onyx. Meanwhile, the other three squad mates of Execute just surrounding Onyx. The loot goblins right here are able to get uh, two early game elims here. Hellcrime. Hot Interesting dude. plays there yeah. from, uh, from Execute. They do catch the rotation. I don't think they were going to follow up there, but ultimately Onyx... Well, needs to go back to driver's ed. Oh. <laughs> Cost himself his life on that one. What's happening here? There's, uh, there's an enemy on the other side of this boulder. Prophecy, do what? we what? know? <laughs> yeah, do we know? No. I don't think so, PB. Oh, no, we definitely was don't like... know. <laughs> no. From behind. Oh, surprise. Oh, he... Quick drop shot. Oh. Flick. Still alive, though, PB. Does he push it or does he wait for the nade? Here's the nade. Got it him, does man. connect. Pro oh man, that was just. Can we cue the clown music? Do we have any? I don't know. What? That was that was insane. This is not good. And are on the hard flank right now from Wanted Vigilantes. Yeah, and what's even more concerning is nobody's even looking at Ander's position from the squad of light work. They're just straight up ignoring it here. Does this guy exist, Dave? It's like he's a ghost. Oh. He's just been standing here firing shots. No one seems to care. No one seems to care, but look at this. His teammates are just getting mopped up on the opposite end right here, and Ander popping in their vehicle. If I'm Ander, I'm pulling up, BB. I am pulling up. You got to get the revenge. Oh, missed the shots. Unfortunately for him, his John Cena effect wears off. They can, in fact, see him. And somehow, some way, prophecy after being two feet away from an enemy and being completely oblivious. Well, he's going to survive and uh, light work <laughs> somehow, Still alive. some way, wins a fight. Yeah, honestly, after that, wanted vigilantes. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I don't know. Uh oh. I don't know about. Here's that. your zombie boys, Dave. What I do know about is zombie boys. They're probably going to win this fight up against Excuse without a doubt. That's one thing I do know here, PV. Zombie boys. Yeah, they were they were starting the fight, Dave, just sacrificing a couple of members, yeah, you know, just them. to make it even. Yeah, we don't need them. It's good. We got this as a duo. Look who else is over here, the duo of hell crime. So zombie boys just drawing them into their <laughs> trap. <laughs> Talk about the trap. Oh, man, this, this is an interesting Sandhawk, BB, I have to say. 
Yeah, so far, so funny, uh, Dave. That was an interesting pull up there. Slow mows it and parks about two feet from an enemy and just sits in the vehicle while he gets blasted. That was uh, an interesting tactic for sure. Unfortunately, it doesn't pay off from this time. We'll have to try that again next time on Sandhawk here. But we are taking a peek now at Zombie Boy's crazy. Mm -hmm. He's snaking in. Got this. We got this. So uh, looking over here. Couple teams in the mix. A lot of teams actually. An excuse. They did lose one after that interesting pull up. Uh, we saw Kai kind of just, you know, surrender right there. They knew they were going to get taken out in that buggy once when they saw the opponent pop out the shack. But uh, still, the trio alive for the time being. Now, they are going to need to be cautious because one team in the area execute. They might hear the shots. They might opt to investigate. They're not going to be too far off from the hilltop that excuse are holding down so we'll see what ends up happening over there dauntless big chilling in boot camp nobody near them for the time being but over here control finally taking the fight this this these two teams have been just in a standstill for a couple minutes now pb they really have this has been a, a fight that's been long brewing up here at camp bravo and neither team seems to have uh, taken control until now, Modo with the trade, loving the off-angle fight there. And now it's starting to pop off. Strangers getting pinned from multiple sides here is Control. Is getting it done. Smokes are out. We're going to try to patch up some members here. We'll see if Modo can get back in the fight. I don't know. I don't know. The nades are starting to rain in as well. These are some interesting angles, Dave. I don't know if uh, Strangers has the opportunity to actually get this done. Just, I mean, look at the off angles on both sides here. Yeah, one thing I do know is uh, we, we saw Cuffy. They've been snaking in the grass for the last 10 minutes over there. So I don't think Strangers BD knows of their position. Now Cuffy is going to be popping up with the DBS revenge with the AKM looking in their direction. This might be the nail in the coffin over here. Control looking to come out on top. There's Quit with the grenade. This is also in the blue, so Papa Blue will be chunking them down just a little bit as Quick now looks to finish what they started. And there we go. A nice little wraparound. That, that pressure. Yeah, that was great pressure right there from Control. You know, I uh, I love the, the fight here from Control. Really well done. You know, they traded early. They got back into the fight and just ultimately smacked strangers around and won that with all four members. And, you know, I got to say, as the zone starts to develop and head to the south, uh, Execute and Dauntless have a just a command like no other. It is uh, that whole left side basically is theirs. All the other teams fighting it out here. And as you can see, Olympia into it. Oh, I called this yeah, fight early game. Olympia like, this is what we work. were wanting to see. Let's see if Olympia wins it. Seven out of ten times. <laughs> Seven out of ten times. Let's see. They, they have three up right now. Alex tossed about three different Molotovs right there. I don't believe any of them were able to connect. Olympia, they are going to be downhill in the compound. A couple smokes are going to be blocking the windows, the sight lines right here. Now we see the pre-fire. So this is a straight-up 3v3 outside. Bisky's off-angle is nasty, Dave. Look at, look at his off-angle. I don't know that uh, Olympia, I don't think they know he's there. Are they taking the fight? Or are they looking to, to go play the zone and just gatekeep them? Oh, hey, fancy driving. Oh, they're, they're pushing. Oh, no, they're taking this fight. Oh, they're taking this fight. Was there ever a doubt? Here we go. Starting to flush out the compound with some Molotovs. It does look like Olympia. They were able to push back to the southern end here. I do appreciate Alex's position, though, PB. I think that's a huge off angle right now going in the way of Olympia. We talked about this a bit pregame, Dave, about Olympia's ability to reposition once they get into fights and be a bit more strategic, last a little bit longer. And you saw light work, you know, just based on what we've seen so far, they're a, a blunt, you know, mm -hmm. a blunt object. They're going to take the fight and they're going straight in, which is what we're seeing here exactly. Now we got Bope into it. They need to win this fight. Bope's down to two players. They've got one of them down, and oh no, Pitless takes them down, and Bope in a major, major pickle here. This is not good for them. Oh, Legend trying to save the day. Oh, a smoke, no grenades, no Molotov, only if you had it. But let's see, Legend with the UMP going for that spray down. I did see a gas can on the floor. We'll see if that 
plays effect here, but the random sprays through the smokes. Pitless, D-E-S. Pitless is like, hey, legend, come on in. Here's the party. You know, this smoke might end up working, but I, I don't like it. He would have had sight lines on a very, very weak. Like, he might have won that fight had he been able to see. Just kind of buying some time. Pitless, I'm so surprised we're going for this pickup. Yep, going to be pulling off that one. Swapping back to the DBS. Eight slugs in the mag. You see Legend missing one here. Legend still with the UMP. Pitless kind of trying to bait the shots right there. The jump shot, but the drop shot Woo! from Legend coming on top. For both esports. Boat needed that one and Legend came up big. That puts four on the board for Boat. They desperately needed it. And now it is his job to just stay alive, Dave. I don't know how long he can last, but uh, uh, huge points there for Boat. They have to get something going if they want any chance of making it back to the Premier Finals. Yeah. Light work now down a, a member. Relax is gone. They still got three up here and they have taken Olympia. I believe down to uh, two members. We'll have to take a peek here and see. Yeah, it looks like Olympia were able to leapfrog just a little bit. They're going to be hugging Corey. So we'll see if uh, that fight erupts again. Um, but light work, I totally agree with you. One of these teams that just straight up brute force, you know, like a hammer on a wall. That's their play style. And I got to say, it's, it's kind of been working out for them here tonight. And uh, they're definitely making a name for themselves in the Titan series, which you love to see here, PB. I really do. I, I love this. Light work again, the very last team to qualify right now. 82 points. Uh, when you compare that with like Rucky Sports, had 182 points. So they were 100 points behind number one coming into this one. And honestly, you can't tell. They've been pretty solid tonight. The competition in the lobby has gone up. And I'm liking what I'm seeing from Light Work. And now it's Lethal Mentality's time to build their reputation they get some nice exchanges here with the zombie boys dave what yeah. is going on with the zombie boys uh, i thought they're gonna win boys. this one uh, we're dead inside you know so we're just living life uh to the fullest uh as we can a 66 crazy gonna be over here with the mk14 just trying to avoid the sight lines of execute here in the next play zone so zombie boys they seem like all four of the players are kind of playing their own individual game and just trying to see who can survive the longest <laughs> Makes sense. This is interesting. The way the circle has gone, too, it's pushed Execute and Dauntless to have to cross this river and venture into the territory. They've lost their zone advantage, whereas a moment ago, it was looking like they were very much in control. And speaking of control, Hello? they're into it now with the solo from Bope. Legend adds another point to the column for Bope. And this is an absolutely legendary performance from him. They needed this so desperately, Dave. Another one. That's what Legend's saying right here. But popping over here to light work, looking to finish what they started up against Olympia. Looks like light work. They only got a solo in it here. Going to be tossing out Molly. that Molotov here, buying some time. This is a 2v1. A little jump shot through the window with the DBS. Here comes the A-cam. Oh. Putting a stop to that here. What a great fight this is, though, Dave. I'm glad we called this one out because this is not disappointed. They have gone back and forth. The trades. On fire. Oh, brother, you can't. They you got can't a stand in the, You Light can't work. stand in the fire. You can't stand in that. Dave, it's against the rules. Hey, seven out of ten. you do not stand in the fire because bad things happen. Seven out of ten, PB. Hey, that was pretty even, though. I got to say, light work down to one member who was about half health left. And, uh, well... Olympia chose to stand in the fire and execute, getting picked apart right now by Dauntless. Both teams having to jockey for that position. Right now, Dauntless gets the upper hand, and execute goes out of the lobby. Yeah, you call this one. You were looking at these two teams as they were on the cusp of fighting because of how the play zones have been kind of forcing them to get up close and personal right there. So that uh, is a huge come up. Although Dauntless only got one of those elims, I think that's still a confidence booster for this squad. It's huge. I mean, they're, they've got uh, a decent position in this zone, although I feel like it favors all of the other squads that were on that eastern side of it. I still like Dauntless's chances here. Again, all four members up. They're the only squad right now with four members up, and uh, they also have the likes of Ruck and Extreme Rage. Those are two other strong teams right now. Number one and number three overall from the Challenger, fi or from the Challenger qualifiers. So, again, uh, they've got the work cut out for them here in this final circles.
Yeah, I'm happy that Ruck is uh, starting to show up as well because uh, definitely a couple questions in the chat were starting to arise because of their performance in game one and two. So maybe there is a, a late evening team as they start to warm up. And on the flip end, another squad warming up has to be Dauntless. As the next circle goes up, looks like Dauntless are going to be holding down the south here. They're cooking, man. They are cooking with gas at this point. This circle... Is a bit toxic, though. Absolutely no one is in it right now. All players having to move to zone, and it is going to invoke some chaos here. Ruck getting the run over. X-Rage taking him down. That's Extreme Rage getting the upper hand right now. And again, we've got all but uh, a few players eliminated from this lobby. Dauntless, the only squad with four remaining. But Extreme Rage still has a three-man, which is conveniently all of the players they brought to the lobby. They started shorthanded in this one, Dave. Still in it. Still in it. And then we also have a solo from X-Space, who is just trying to survive a little longer. Even if they get taken out right here, fourth place. That's four place and points, so that's still solid. But now let's see Dauntless in the sight lines of Ruck here as Dauntless are looking to work their way uphill. They are going to be taking center position. Oh, no. Ruck. Nice shots. That tree, man. It's not thick enough. Got caught there, peeking that rock. I thought he had a, a good angle there, but unfortunately, the first player in, it looks like uh, Sky sees him and takes him down. The interesting thing, Dave, X-Base and Ruck were into each other early on. I remember up in Hot 10, that was the fight that broke out up there. Both of them have made it to the final circles here, even though that ended with teams, you know, running away, tails tucked between their legs, shorthanded, but it hasn't prevented them from making their way here to this final circle, but both now clinging to life with just one member remaining as Klaus reigns in the grenades looking for the finish here, but un Unknown on the flank is about to take him down. Oh, I love the discipline right there from Unknown. The timing could have been better as now Ruck still in it here with only one alive and it looks like from behind extreme range now starting to third party here i like ruck's position here ruck has a chance to win this actually everyone else is down to one member left and it's all about if any of these teams can get the revive off it looks like dauntless is going to do just that sky eliminates unknown finally finishing their fight from hot 10 and Dauntless is on the move here. He gets the knock, the finish, and it's Dauntless versus Ruck. It's a 2v1. There we go. The numbers in the favor oh, I thought of he Dauntless. Was gonna miss those Did we I thought he was going to miss all those shots. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Dauntless gets the winner, winner, chicken dinner. Dave, they needed Let's this go. one. Dauntless comes back in a big way. You love to see it. Dauntless trying to re-qualify to compete in the Premier Finals. Game one, they had, what, two elims. Game two, another two elims. But game three, baby, five elims and the winner, winner, chicken dinner. Now, PB, that's not enough, in my opinion, to get them in top four. But it is a great start as we move into the next half of the evening. It really is, Dave. One of the things that I, you know, I wanted to make a point here is, you know, when I'm looking at the breakdown of the elims, it's really even across the board. What, what that means is the rank points become more and more valuable. If you don't have teams absolutely going crazy and putting a big gap in elims, the only team that's really done that so far is Execute. Um, you've got a little bit with light work, but with them going out kind of earlier in the matches, this was the first one they really popped off and got those eight elims. But man, I, I love the, the fact that the rank points are actually going to mean something here because everybody was kind of even. Let's go ahead and bring Hot Jukes back in so we can discuss this game a bit more. Sandhawk was nutty. Hot Jukes, what did you make of that game three? Dauntless, baby! All right, there we go. You know, it sucks to see Klaus go out early. I mean, I would love to see him there at the end game, but they didn't need him. I think it really came down to what I said earlier, right? Who gets that end zone? Because there was teams dropping like flies early in this match. You can see right here. I love the fact that Ruck, right, being a challenger division team, started off with this fight okay so they didn't just get this game handed to them but they still got a nice second place finish at the end of it you love it man six c limbs and a second place finish and they started off losing a member and being down in a you know a 3v4 ultimately they uh you know they secured their position early and and worked their way through a difficult uh rotation and difficult circle and they really earned this one but really the story of mid game Ooh. here Light work, man. They were putting on a show. 
don't don't get me started on Kai's pull up here. This was a funny one to me. But light work getting really, really hot on those muzzles, man. They were doing some serious heavy work. Got to ask you, Dave, do you think this is something they can keep up? Because if they can, I like their chances to move on. Uh, is it too is it too late for me to swap out one of my teams, PB? Let me ask you that. <laughs> is it too late? Now, I'm not going to swap out Zombie Boys, but I think I'll swap out Hellcrime because I am becoming the biggest fan of light work here this evening. I mean, we're getting to see some really good, uh, good plays from this squad. I believe this was their best game yet when it comes to Elims. Yeah. Eight Elims here this match. So, light work. PB, I am number one fan right now. I'm, I'm the conductor number of the one. hype train. Wow. Number, number one, one fan. Dave is conducting the hype train. Choo -choo. You love that. Choo choo, baby. We are loving light work. And I got to say, I like that they got into it with Olympia Esports because three out of 10 times, they'll actually win that fight. And we saw that happen during this game. And uh, they got into it. Big, big props to them. They were that blunt force instrument and uh, got the job done as we see Sky here. Really great game from Sky, to be honest with you. Uh, was number two overall in the lobby. Picked up three E-limbs there, but not enough at the end as uh, Dauntless able to get the revive and capitalize to take their first chicken dinner of these Challenger Finals. So next up, we'll be turning our attention to Vikendi. We're going out to the snow, Hot Jukes. What do you make of that, and what are you predicting for our snowy weather here? Ooh, see, Vikendi's a tough one, right? Because you got to go for that high ground. That's a must. And I am really curious, especially considering how we saw this last Sandhawk go, right? Uh, my eyes were laser focused, right, on boot camp. And this is exactly how many teams I saw boot camp. None, right? So are we going to see... Some of these teams drop in some of the hotter locations in Vikendi. Even then, it's still going to be a tough battle. So, I don't know. I think it's anyone's game in this match. Uh, exactly. Exactly, PB. You got to dial it in. And hopefully, I can see a back-to-back -back nice finish from light work. Because I do like how they have been playing. We saw that initial fight early on, PB, right? They know how to get into it. So, hopefully, uh, this is a team I would love to see in the Premier Division. I'd like to see light work make it. You know, I, I think they may lack a little discipline for the big boys, but they got the gun skills, man. They, they like to fight, and I think that's half of the battle because, honestly, if you're getting into a lot of fights, that's the quickest way to learn. And I think intelligent players are born from a lot of interactions and a lot of fights and a lot of gunplay, and, uh, you know, I think they're on their way, man. I like the way light work is trending. It's been a really impressive night for them so far. And uh, again, also impressive from the likes of Execute. They've really turned it around here in week number four for this Challenger Finals, and I'm liking their chance to move on. So, uh, Dave, I, I got to get your prediction, my friend. If you got to pick one team and one team only to win this next game on Vikendi, who are you picking? Yeah, so I'm thinking here. So Execute, they're, they're kind of like a, knight, a knife, you know? They just, like, slice really cleanly through the cake. Um, I'm looking at... Uh, Hmm. <laughs> Light work. They're kind of like a hammer, you know, like just. <clears throat> so I'm going to go with the hammer. I think hammer wins over knife nine out of 10 times PB. So I'm looking for light work after that last game. Eight E limbs. I think they're due for a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Got it. So rock, hammer, knife. Nice. I don't know that this, the play that's did the game. actually make those hand signals, rock, but, knife. but I like the pick. Uh, <laughs> All good, Dave. All good. Hot Jukes, coming to you, man. Who are you picking to win this next one? All right, I'm going to go on to Vigilantes, all right? And the reason why is because I picked them early on, and they need it, okay? All right, so if we want to see one of Vigilantes return to the Premier Division, I think it's now or never for them. Love it. Love it. I, I don't Simple. believe you, but I love it. I, 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 I hope I, they I, do. I, I, I want the now or never. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully it's more now versus uh, never, but I, I have my thoughts that it might be never. I'm going with Execute to go uh, take their second chicken dinner of the day. I think uh, Vikendi is not a map that many of these teams have played super competitively. So uh, I'm, think, I'm thinking Execute's coming back and taking their second chicken dinner of the day. They've been impressive so far. I'm looking for Casper to put them over on top. So uh, with that, we're waiting for these teams to load up for the lobby. 
a little slower than the premier teams, I might add, but that's okay. <laughs> they, they got the hang of this. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm just saying. We'll get that uh, tightened up for y'all. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with game number four. But Kenny action coming up next. Wands one back to 1v1. Cartman down really low with the DD. Oh! That's it. They go check out for the win. We got four teams that are going to be going on from tonight's action. The Challenger Finals, and they'll be joining the top 12 teams from this season's Premier 
qualifiers, and that will be going down this Thursday. So make sure you guys have your bookmarks set, your RFSPPs made, and then you guys are going to tune in on Thursday night, 4 p.m. Pacific for the Premier Finals. And again, it's a hard road to hoe to get there, Hot Jukes, but four teams will be making it out from tonight's action. How do you think it's going so far? I think it's going great. I mean, I think we're seeing, you know, uh, teams that we really expected to do well, do well. I mean, executes crushing it, right? But we're starting to see some really nice shining stars right now. How these teams are going to perform in those, uh, you know, premier finals, that is yet to be said. But still, you know, I, I love the fact, I just love the format of Titan Series as a whole, right? The fact that we're going to give some of these teams a chance to directly compete with those big boys. Four of them, as a matter of fact. And I'm really excited to see which four of those are going to be. Love it. Dave, hey. you know, I'm playing a, a game right now. I know the audience is doing the same thing. It's, it's what the heck is the standings, right? What's the ranks? So let's play a game. If you could, like, guess four teams right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That might be on top of the standings based on the first few games. Okay. What four teams do you think are up there? I think Execute's got to be one, yeah. right? Yeah, put me in, Coach. Put me in. So I'm looking at Execute definitely at the top. They have, they have been popping off. They've been farming the lobby, let's be real. Uh, last game, a little more on the chill side. Four kills going their way. Um, if I had to guess other teams, uh, I'm looking at... Zombie Boys NA, you know, I picked them in the pre-show, so they're probably at the top, uh, you know, without a doubt. They've been doing a great job. Maybe Olympia Esports up there, so that's three. And then the fourth one, X-Space Esports. I mean, that win in game number two on Miramar with six kills, phenomenal here, PB. Yeah, I think one that uh, that you might have missed is Max Split. They've been up there a bit uh, as well. True. Ma maybe. I don't know. They're like right on the cusp, right? I feel like a couple of the gimmies. Um, I don't know if there's any gimmies. They're like one point Max behind Split, Zombie to be honest Boys, with you. probably, if I had to guess. All right. Well, shoot. We can hypothesize on that. We will have some standings here fixed up for you guys in just a bit. But let's go to Vikendi. It's time to wade on into the snow. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you brought your parkas. These teams are about to get it on. Let's head to game number four. Let's go, baby. Let's go. You better park that button, that seat, baby, because we still got a lot more action left here. And uh, this is that wild card game, I think, for myself. You know, Vikendi is always interesting because it's it's a smaller map, but there's so much coverage, right? There's so many hills, so many trees, so many big rocks that even if there's a close, tight area, you can still find some place to call home. So here we go. Match numero cuatro, number four, on your way. And um, what do we think about this plane path here? I think it sucks, Hot Jukes. I think it genuinely sucks. But I got to ask a question before it pops up. Is the zone going extreme top left, top right, bottom left, or bottom right? It's going to go one. Bottom left. Bottom left. I want to like see a dino I like bottom left, finish. too. I want to see a dino It's the most finish. toxic. It's the most toxic, so I got to go bottom left as well. We'll see where this thing actually pops up. Dino Park would be pretty legit, especially given the latest update in PUBG Mobile being completely dinosaur-themed. Grant us this, PUBG Mobile gods. Give us the Dino Park finish. Come on. Give it to us. Give it to us. We saw Bolt take off nice and early. Then on that north side of the map, Ruck is heading right towards a Dino Park. That'll be interesting. And, oh, well, it looks like we're starting to see a battle right off the rip here. And this is in, this is in Pod, all right? Pod Vostra. Yeah. Control. They, these teams have been into it a few times. It's Control and Strangers going at it once again and already. No, this is light work in Strangers. Okay. We got a third party. We got a third party going on. All right, you got Control here as well. And loot getting looted up really quick. Ah, top right. Stop right. We should have known. We should have known. Should have known. It's uh, it's pretty good for the the plane path though. This went like directly through this circle, so ultimately uh, pretty safe for anybody to jump near the plane. Everyone else though may have a hard time finding their way back to this safe circle. But uh, got my eyes peeled right now in Pavosto, center of the map. Three squads occupying a very crucial zone uh, spot in the zone. Not only for obviously surviving here. But uh, is man floating? That's good. I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Anyway, uh, it's a crucial spot in the circle. Centrally located at a choke point. We'll see uh, who comes out of Podvosto here. Olympia getting on the board early. 
That'd be nice. All right, let's see. Yeah, they did get one player. That's going to be Betty finishing that one. But here comes 20. Looking to apply a little bit more pressure. Nice there. Nice little 180. Check his back just in case. And uh, he's going to go ahead and get that thirst. Beautifully done. Another point on the board. So that's two to start off for Olympia Esports. And I Dream Rage here. Is, is facing off with them, but there is a third party on the way in right now. You've got an uh, excuse coming in from the east right now, and I want to see if this gets pretty hairy. Uh, we've got just about 20 seconds until that pops off here. Is, uh, it's like Extreme Rage not wanting much of this fight. They are trying to back off and survive. A couple of members picked off early. Olympia Esports once again getting out to a hot start, and, and we were just talking about who we might suppose is in the top four. Olympia Esports has got to be close, if not right there. Oh, I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it. And uh, this was one of your teams that you picked here, PB, right, early on? So Yeah, this was one of the ones that I thought might might move on to Premier Finals. We'll see. I like the pick. I did like the pick. And they're going to see Execute trying to get a push going themselves. And they're going to go ahead and give a little bit of a pause to it for now. Start throw some of that utility. Try to catch Jimmy off guard. Was it you that predicted Hellcrime this game? Uh, Hellcrime. I did. I picked Hellcrime last game. Last game. Last game. Okay, they're though. giving Execute all they can handle here. Uh-oh. Never mind. Never Second mind. Thoughts. They're not. They're giving them just some that they can handle. They're about to get this DBS right now. If they ain't careful. Ooh, the Bizone comes out. Kill switch almost gets caught on fire, but Jinx gets Casper. That's going to open up the fight a bit and even things out. Now Kill switch is on his back foot. He's going to hit the shot. Oh, never mind. Wow. Get bodied, son. Jinx. Jinx. Man, that, that, was a, that was a clutch play right there from Jinx. That was, uh, that was a big boy gun down out in the open, nowhere to hide. The Good only shot. way to hide is behind those bullets, and he does just that. Execute down to just one member in this one, and they are getting absolutely torn to shreds by Hellcrime so far. Just Telly Welly. Telly Welly all by himself. Good to see Telly back Welly. on the board, too. And definitely a sniper lover, Man. and he's going to have a chance to use that sniper in Cheer Park. Hey, PB Curse is in full effect. We did picks Execute here to go uh, win that chicken dinner, and they were eliminated in record speed. So. <laughs> PB Curse in full effect. Just wanted to confirm that. Let's go, dude. PB Curse strong. And if that's strong, then we know Hellcrime's in big trouble because here comes Ruck. And dude, I, I like this from Ruck, Hot Jukes. They sniffed out the, uh, the third party here, moved in, and I like this to start maybe a chicken dinner run here. For, oh, for we'll see. what the Ruck? One of their own teammates get knocked. <laughs> that has got to hurt. Hellcrime could turn things around here. One good knock. Make things interesting. It was a, a reckon ridiculous nade there, man. He naded his own guy. Oh, the worst. Oh, it looks like it didn't matter, though. What, <laughs> the, what the rock? <laughs> <laughs> what, what's going on? Hellcrime oh, man. Clutch here, nades all the way around. Listen, I think we just uh, have a gentleman's agreement. Let's just drop grenades at our feet, and we'll see who survives. And ultimately, it's Ruck winning one of the stranger fights I've seen in a while. Multiple team kills in effect, and uh, Hellcrime. After a hot start, they're taking out the top dogs and execute. They are quickly eliminated. Yeah, bold strategy for Hellcrime. Unfortunately, <laughs> not working out for them there. Uh, but hey, you know what? Game four, baby. You know, sometimes you got to mix it up. You do. It's an unorthodox strategy for sure. They took some notes off of Ruck. They're like, hey, uh, we like the way you open that fight. We're going to try that. And unfortunately, it was their last few members. You hate to see it. Zone's starting to come in. Pushing these teams. Going to make them rotate. And some of those teams that need to get on that rotation, we're looking at Dauntless all the way on the south side. But they have a really good open path to get into this next zone. So they shouldn't have to worry. But, you know, you got quite a few teams. Olympia, Excuse. Uh, I think even light work need to get moving as well. So really interesting to see how these guys are going to move on in. Actually, that's lethal mentality. Lethal mentality got to move. They do. This is, uh, this is zombie boys on your screen here. We got Emmer boy of the zombie boys, man. They're, they're keeping their eye out here in Peshkova. What a boy. Got a good little spot right now. If that zone goes to them, they might get blessed once again here and see that top finish. And, uh, you know, we're talking a little bit about Dauntless. I like 
They've got like a really great path to zone here through Volnova and really they could own the whole half of this bottom zone. And this is exactly what happened in last game in Sandhawk where we saw them with uh, Execute and it was like whoever wins that fight's going to own the circle and it ended up being Dauntless. They have the exact same thing materializing for them again here. 100%. I mean, I like the way zombie boys are positioning themselves. They're in a really good area for this zone. I want to see them kind of hunt that high ground. There's a lot of areas right next to them where they can really get that vision going. So I want them to stay a little bit active, right? Hunt down that best spot. It's going to definitely help out for the rest of the game. Now, complete standstill here in pod. They, this zone is locked in and dialed in. I am not surprised we're seeing these teams take it very, very slow here. I like where light is, though. It, this is a crazy zone. I mean, you see a lot of teams. We talked about Podvosto a little bit early on. It's still crowded. You can see control there, strangers there. Light work is still hovering around there. This is uh, this is a lot happening. You got X space uh, kind of in range, um, but you're gonna have other teams moving in here as well. We got likes of Ruck, Olympia. We even have Lethal Mentality starting to move in. They've got to go through Mount Kresnik first. But uh, light work here, trying to get this high ground. We'll see if they can find a way. I don't know that. Well, we'll see if they can get up there. We'll keep tabs on that. But Olympia is starting to rotate in here as well. Here they go. Dauntless taking their sweet time. Yeah, Dauntless taking a, a hot minute to get to this next zone. They're not even close. So they're looking to just loot up super late. For everybody that can't see them, they're all the way on the south side of the map. Like the tippy south. And they're going to be driving their way in up north. So very, very safe rotations for Dauntless. You can tell that they definitely want to make it into those premier finals. And uh, Max Split. What do you feel about Max Split's performance so far, PB? I was actually just going to bring that up, uh, Jukes. They, I, I like it so far. This is a team that, to me, has uh, they showing a little bit of substance, right, with the play. I can definitely see, like, you know, tactics and strategy along with, you know, their rotations, their positioning. They seem like one of the more intelligent teams in the lobby. And I'm excited to see what they can continue to do uh, as these games and as these circles move on. I'm a big fan so far of what I've seen. But again, yeah. it's a long night. We're only halfway through so far. I got to agree. I think Max Split, uh, you could see them like rotationally. They really pick in good positions. They've got good synergy, I think, when it comes to like just their body area close together next to each other when they get into a fight but you know i think their gun skill and ability to finish is yet to be seen so this is the game to do it Great. in all honesty right they can get it done right here and they've got good coordination and they've crashed you know uh, uh, you know good synergy at the same time but again seeing those you know heads up fights haven't seen it just yet from them hopeful that we will soon um but again next circle not much uh different here it looks like it's centered up on pod all these teams playing very central and only a few edging in and it, it, you're not going to see a lot of uh you know edge pressure here um as these teams start rotating in but as we take a peek at pod they, i mean this is where all the teams are right now and the, the crazy thing and this is like you know very typical of the kendi is like they, they really don't have to fight nope you know they could choose to just chill until these circles actually press them out of the rooms but uh, I believe Lightwork is starting to zone in on one of the Strangers players. They, they may, I think they know he's there. Well, I don't know what he's doing because he's got to get out of there eventually because he's, he's going to get full scent on. Yeah, he's, he's going to get full scent on completely. Yeah, Assad in the closet. And that is where he's going to Oh, his own teammate gets knocked. But Lightwork able to do exactly just that. Now Strangers BD is coming in, but way too late. Or is it? <laughs> the, the third party is coming in. All Strangers BZ has to do is kill one dude now. And uh, look at look at that. Strangers gets wiped, and uh, Bisky is uh, getting that biscuit. Very nice job from him to uh, keep the squad alive here. Control, though, looking to potentially take advantage. Ooh. Quit has sight lines on top of that building. I don't think they're going to make the commitment here to crash. Man. Really nice work there from uh, light work to stay alive. Yeah, I think that that could have been an easy third party if they would have really just looked at that feed and just seen how many players that were knocked heard those shots. I think they could have timed it. Uh, it's a lot easier to do that early in the game because that feed isn't going nuts late game. It's a lot easier to track. And I think if they were really paying attention, they would have realized that there was three down and they could have full sent it on light work. But 
You know what? Sometimes better safe than sorry. That's the that's the motto. That's the Look motto. at the split though that they have with control. You can see him in multiple different buildings. I just think they couldn't get coordinated in time. Uh, to make that push, because I, I agree, the call I think there is to push this and try to clear out that squad, especially since the zone is hard shifted to the east. Uh, it's likely that they're going to have to move out of Podvosto at some time here, and in order to do that, now they're going to be having to fight with somebody else instead of taking the fight while they had it. Uh, um, so it's a lot more likely they're going to get third party a bit later on, but here we take a peek over at Lethal Mentality colliding with Ruck. Ruck getting the jump on him here, and uh, Ruck's starting to pick up a little bit of momentum. They're down one member, but a uh, couple of E-limbs to their name so far, and they're looking for more. Ruck have shown that they could definitely finish these fights, so if they smell blood in the water, I will not be shocked if we see them really jump on it. But, you know, I think with this certain area that they're in, it's pretty risky. Oh, not to mention you got Olympia right behind them. So, yeah, they're completely sandwiched. I think Ruck is not trying to make any silly decisions unless they have to. They're going to have to move out of here eventually, though. I really like the way Olympia plays, man. They, uh, you know, they, they back out of fights when they don't have the positional advantage. And they try to get to better uh, angles, to better sight lines, and really try to make sure that they're fighting uh, with great angles. They remind me a little bit of Nova, to be honest with you, uh, or and Hyper. Uh, as far as like the, their style of play, they just don't rotate as fast as uh, in Hyper does. We'll see if the gun skills are up to snuff as well as they choose to cross the, the river and uh, go get to the zone here. Now, like we said before, control into it with light work. And now it's a it's a much more difficult fight. Oh, yeah, uh, because light work was able to get uh, patched up a little bit, but only two players remain at this point. Quick caught some toes there on the prophecy. Um, yeah, I think that right now they should be kind of focusing on their game plan in case the zone does go off of pod. Like, where are they going to rotate away from? Uh, but for now, you can just see them just trying to get some sneaky, sneaky peeks here. Maybe catch another player from Lava. But oh, oh, self name. Oh, what is going on, Jukes? Brutal. And Look that... where he's at too. How did he nade himself from over there? Oh. Here comes lethal mentality. They are pushing this. And that, oh, like we said, one mistake is all it takes. He's going to throw that nade in that window. If it hits, ooh, just barely off the mark. Man, the self nades this game have been interesting. I don't know how Everest got net knocked by his own team there. He was well behind the action. It's almost like he meant to throw a smoke or something. I don't know what's going on. But, uh, yeah, the zone has hard shifted once again. It's moving out of pod, and the teams will indeed have to move. And now you're going to see Control get into it. Uh, they're going to push this fight because it is that time. Nades are out. Moto going to get in trouble here. Narrowly avoids getting knocked. Dude, that nade on the quit was disgusting. He threw it out the window. Perfectly timed. And that definitely helped them out here. So light work. Still alive. It's going to be a tough fight here against Control, but, oh, they did open up that window area, so he was able to jump out. Now they got angles. They got angles. It's uh, This is tough, man. Light work trying to do everything they can to win this fight, but unfortunately they lose a member and Control in Control as they eliminate light work. That's exactly what they needed to happen because the zone already on its way in. It'll be one minute before they're in the blue zone. They got to find a way to rotate out. And they've got Ruck on the ridge right now, outflanking them. And uh, the rotation from control just got that much more difficult here. So they've got to go through many different teams. This is why I was saying a little bit earlier that they probably should have taken that fight. Uh, wow, look at this. Cool cars, guys. Cool. Full sending it down the way here. Looking good. So Ruck driving in style here. Dauntless rocket the purplish Fuchsia Tesla. So they're going. I love to be, their position. Oh yeah, they're set up pretty well here on this south side, and they can rotate they away. Got a compound. Exactly. They can they can rotate away. They have that whole. I mean, they can go all the way east to the edge of circle if it keeps rotating that way. Dauntless, I think, has the best position right now with uh, the cement factory in play. They have high ground sight lines. They're looking solid. Ruck Bye. rotates right into Bope, and Crow eliminated quickly. It's now up to Sky and Everest to get that revenge. Oh, the shots from behind, though, connect and sky down as well. That's huge for Bope. Bope definitely need to put some big points on the board. Here comes Fuego, that fire. Look, they finish off Everest here. Oh, that angle is going to do it, though. Everest is just hurt bad. Bope need to full send and finish this fight quick. 
this is uh this is good for both they they were able to get a little momentum going last game start to pick things up a little bit and uh you know this is a squad that coming in had to be one of the favorites everest getting the the shots on the nightcrox and nick rocks is gonna and he, he's got to get that confirmed man he's about to be eliminated oh everest by the skin of his teeth barely survive okay that nade is finally gonna do it <laughs> So, Bope, finishing off this fight, need to get looted up quick. They got six seconds left on the clock. They need to get in control of that northern side sooner than later. They really do. And, you know, I got to call out our friends over uh, at Max Split. Optimal position, center circle, compounds. Uh, they're, they're looking really tactically sound here so far. I just want to see if they can win their gunfights. That's going to be the question. That's always the question. Even when you don't have cover, right? You got to be able to win, hit those shots, hit those control having to creep their way on in they have one player knocked in the process with no vehicles this is going to be a huge challenge for control limpy is uh going to be in a tough spot here shortly they are in a bit of a shooting gallery right now and look at this oh come on oh. now you gotta you gotta finish that he doesn't do it and olympia on the ropes they're down to one player remaining it's up to fetty Betty hitting some shots from across the way, but his teammates are in between a rock and a hard place. No smokes to Fetty's name. He has to run out and go for it. Barely trying to make it through that broken wall. And... I was thinking the same exact thing with the smokes. It's like he's got no way to even shield himself from any sort of third-party action, and there's plenty of it to be had. You can see the likes of Excuse and one of Vigilantes. They even so much as peek in that direction. They are finished, but uh, for now... He's able to keep him in the fight. Start getting them patched up here. Limpy Esports hanging by a thread. Next zone about to pop. Centers right on up. Max Split looking to the sky saying, gracias. Thank you very much. And uh, this could be a huge game for them. Actually, it should be. So they got to finish strong here. They got to show they're gonna, what they're about. They're going to have to fend off Dauntless, dude. Look at that rotation. Dauntless went uh -oh. all the way to the east side. And they're about to crash here on Max Split. Big heads up play from Dauntless. You got to know that hardship side is usually going to be open most of the time. And they have the only team in front of them is Max Split. That's going to be that huge fight. Whoever takes that could possibly win this game. Don't don't forget about Bulp, though. Bulp is at the top. And they've got some eliminations under their belt. So they're feeling pretty good. They really are. It's going to be a big mess on that other side. You can see as the aerial view kind of hovers over the likes of uh, one of Vigilantes over there. Uh, they're going to be into it with excuse. Uh, it, this is a tough spot. You got Olympia over Very there as well. Very interesting here. Very interesting place. Let's see what Big Z and Dauntless can do. Skipper all the way on this edge. Going to have to try and push his way into Max Split. Vigilantes. They really have to defend this position well. So they, it's time for Max Split's time to just stand up straight, put some heavy shots downrange, and just play keep away. Interesting. This Taran G uh, heading over you know, like, around the... It's not in the safe zone, but here. he is trying to grab angle. that... Uh... Skipper. On the hold as Sloth. Is going to make some shots onto Fuego, uh, and he's going to possibly shoot him out the vehicle, but barely makes it away, Fuego. Barely making it away, indeed. Zir Circle's getting small, Jukes. There's still a lot of teams left in this one. Nine of them still standing. Lethal Mentality makes it to the rock, but uh, I don't know how much more gas they've got left in the tank. Ooh. And they are done. Boop, starting to stack up the bodies. They're up to six right now. All right, now here comes Dauntless, right? Here's their time to shine. They're gonna full push this fight perfectly on time as Terran is gonna be tearing up this field, stealing some eliminations and putting some more points on the board. Here goes Max Split just trying to defend their position desperately. They did allow some teams to push up on them, but they do shut it down quickly. There goes X Pace. Max Split is. Uh... Has been impressive so far, Jukes. They've had the zone. They've been in position every single time. Uh, but now they don't have the angles, and Skipper and Dauntless have surrounded them. And it's time for the crash. You're going to see them battle for that compound. It is time. We'll see if they uh, actually make it in there or not. They did move. But the zone has actually shifted even further away now. This is unpredictable as all heck. Will they go through Max Split and try to get to Circle, or are they going to go around 
problem is, if you look at uh, going around, no matter where they go, they're going to fly into a hot Beautiful. Team. Oof. Max Split on the defense now. Huge shots from Max Split. This is exactly what they needed to do. You have to focus on your back line. You cannot make that mistake of pushing in a little too early. So I want to see Max Split full commit to Dauntless here. Take them out, then worry about the zone afterwards. That's just the tail of the take. This is really good play from both teams, actually. Good defense from Max Split. Good push from Dauntless. They really worked uh, into a very difficult position. And now, ultimately, they're both fighting for something that's not even in the circle, but they're committed, and there's no way out of this engagement. They try to go another direction. They're going to be into the third party, and they're going to get eviscerated. So it's all or nothing right now. For Dauntless, Terran G is going to come down to support here any moment. Make this a nice 3v3. Oh, I think I like Dauntless on this one here. They're going to have a lot more sight lines, and Max Split is going to have a really hard time trying to defend this. So... Uh, what they're doing, Max Split is literally split, right? Between trying to move into this next zone and focusing on Dauntless, I think they need to choose one or the other. Gotta say, though, we're down to the top five, and three of the premier teams that have come down still alive in this one. Bope having a great game so far. Have one player down, and hey, the Zombie Boys have made another appearance. Yeah. Very, very quiet. Haven't gotten many oh, elims, yeah. but dude, they're still hanging. Did the boy. Oh, that one's gonna haunt his dreams. He had a, he had a feast right in front of him and just couldn't take the bite. That's gonna be tough here. Now let's see what the rest of Max Split can do. And he had three eliminations. He's gonna look like he will get rezzed. Oh, but that really put Max Split in a big, big trouble. But they don't have to worry because Dauntless seems to be rotating away from them. It's good, good plays all the way around. I, I like the pressure that Max Split put out against Dauntless here. They're going to confirm Klaus. Beautiful. And Max Split still alive. But now the zone pressure is on. And again, Terran has leapfrogged him. Oh, what a shot. And he gets the knock. That was huge. He's got one more to fend off up there, though, as the zombie boy is still camping. Ha they're, they're the funniest team, man. They get that zone and they just chill. Not a worry in the world, baby. Right? They got that Dave blessing. So They do. Look, they they're dead children. center in that circle. Aaron G. They have been blessed. Oh, I mean, you can be asked for being more blessed. I mean, they haven't had to move a muscle here. And honestly, Pinda could have took them all out, but they made a, just a quick mistake, and then now they're kind of on the back foot. They do have those sight lines, though. Can Taryn hit this nade? One more. All it takes. Zombie boys, shut down Pitless. That was huge. He's got a few to choose from here. He just threw five nades, oh and he still has nades? six in the bag. Throw them all. Throw them all. Oh, but Pinda's in a perfect position. There's no way he's getting naded here. It would have to be the perfect grenade. And, and look at this. He knows he it's there. Missed. Oh, but he missed. He missed. He missed. He missed the shots. Oh. Taryn, there's no way. Oh, there's oh, no way. The shimmies, the jukes, the spray. Bro. Oh, zombie boys. Zombie boys are hurting my brain right now. How do they miss? All three guys are shooting at him. He even stopped. Like, okay, I'm dead. And he's like, oh, wait, no, I'm not dead. I'm going to keep playing here. He almost ends up winning that fight somehow. But, hey, zombie boys are still in it, baby. It's a, t it's a 1v1 now against Bope. And uh, I like Bope's chances here. It's a three It's a three on three. Bope's got one member down. But zombie boys, is uh, they're, they're chilling. Oh, my gosh. But Bope only has one tree. They're going to be pushing up here. Can zombie boys mount the defense? They do hit the off angle and Nycrox. It's just Roa. This is a 2v1. Two, 2v1 two two situation. Come on, Roa. Believe. Hit those. Hit them. Oh, so close. They got the finish. They're going for that uh, revive. How is that they don't care about they, they, They're not. This does not speak to confidence right now. They're going for the revive. They're trying to play it safe. Get three angles on this tree instead of just two. But I don't know if even that's going to be enough. Roa's going to clutch this. Here it comes. Not the nade. He's pushing forward. This is the nade. Oh, he's in a perfect position here. He can win this fight. Can he go? Pre-fire. He's got to time it perfectly. He gets one. Oh, my God. Goes oh wow. Oh, 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 oh. Massive boy. effort there from Bob, unable to get the clutch. But dang it, that was a good effort. I got to say, though, I'm, I'm having to eat my hat about them zombie boys. They, uh, they were gifted zone. They stayed quiet. And uh, the game kind of fell into place for him there. It was a little interesting, I'm not going to lie, but Zombie Boy's locking down a chicken dinner, getting eight E-limbs to go along with it. 
that has to be huge for their chance to move on today, especially since they finished high up in the rankings earlier once today. Hot Juice, how did you feel that game went? Woo! I mean, they're big chilling. I mean, to be frank, uh, from my position, right, Zombie Boys, I think they got blessed in game one, and they got blessed here. But one thing they have shown is that now, even if we get blessed, we can capitalize on it, right? We can still finish. Absolutely. We can get that dub. I do think they got a little bit lucky with Max Split there for a second. But hey, you know what? We'll take luck all day long, baby. We'll take that to the bank. Absolutely. Let's bring Enigma back in to talk about it a little bit. Enigma, how do you think? Feel that uh, game four went on Bikendi here. Any takeaways? I mean, we all got the same idea. Just a little bit of ruck, luck at the right moment. Just, you know, <laughs> lets you start, you know, start getting up in that top placement. And I mean, we're all looking for that top four to move on. So, I mean, if you're getting lucky, whether it's you slaughtering the lobby, it don't matter at the end of the day. Hey, we'll take those blessings all day long. Execute getting into it with Hellcrime early on in this one. And Hellcrime. Getting the better of him, actually. It was kind of interesting here. Didn't quite work out. Really was on the back of Jinx right here with making these B shots in the open. Just no one able to compete with Hellcrime early on. And this one, with the exception of Ruck making the push. So, uh, this was a quick capitalization here on this fight. I was about to say, the only team that can compete with Hellcrime is themselves. With that nade. Oh, oh just hit the oh, edge. Geez. The edge. That's all it took. Oh, he's going to be hearing about that one for a while. This was the game of self nades. I think we saw at least four different occasions where people were just blowing themselves up. And I, I, I don't understand it, fellas. Uh, there's another one. Uh, that was actually a finish there. Everest did get knocked to set up that fight by a self nade. Had that not happened, I don't think the push would have been as successful here. But, uh, you know, again, a game of oddities here. Love this fight between Dauntless and Max Split. It did not actually make it all the way, uh, you know, to its conclusion. We get we did get the 1v1 at the end here, um, but ultimately both teams trying to prioritize zone. But love the uh, tactical battle between Max Split and Dauntless. Enigma, what did you think about Max Split and uh, the way they played this game? I think they played it amazing. I mean, we saw them when they were taking the 3v fight against Dauntless. They were moving back slowly but surely, just trying to see if Dauntless makes any sort of mistakes pulling up. We saw, you know, uh, them actually getting an opening knock on the player driving in on the replay. Uh, and then, unfortunately, after, you know, not being able to find another knock or kill to possibly take the fight in the compound. But for them, it's a lot of just, you know, confidence with them being able to pressure a team to ultimately not push into you. Because we saw Dauntless ended up just going straight into the open using smokes. I mean, the Terran, I believe, had 15 or something frag grenades at the end of the day. Um, and for them, it's just like, okay, well, we don't want to fight uh, light work. We just want to, like, go and make our own spot in the zone. I really liked uh, Dauntless's performance there. They didn't get the eliminations that they were hoping for, only finishing with four in that game. But honestly, pretty well done from them. They uh, they rotated all the way around the southern part of that and really had a great path to do so. So again, I like the play from Dauntless here. I thought uh, Max Split was really, really well. Uh, I want to see the zombie boys use their angles better. They almost <laughs> got 1v3'd at the end there with the guy pushing in the open. Like, that was crazy. And somehow, some way, he almost got the, the dub there. But Bope starting to build a little bit of momentum, Hot Juice. Do you think that there is a chance for Bope in these final two games? Heck yeah, when he throw it out eight eliminations, right, when the time is needed. I mean, you could have to be happier. You know, one thing that I got to saw, though, besides Bope, right, I'm pretty sure I saw Max Split Mellow right there at the end, single tapping an M4. Okay, that's right. I don't know why. I, Enigma, I think you saw it too, right? I don't know. I don't know why he was doing that. He was doing something, I guess. I mean, I'm not sure if I would have done that, but it was an accident. Well, you know, maybe he just accidentally hit that single above his gun because I think if he would have had that, he would have taken out Dauntless a lot earlier. Oh yeah, for sure. That's an interesting strategy. I, I, I. I've done that many times on accident, but I can't yeah. stay in the thick of it in a final circle. I'm like, hold on, let me put this this automatic weapon on single fire and get that accuracy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so uh, we are going to turn our attention uh, to a new map coming up next. I believe we got Miramar coming up next. We're going to go back to the desert and check out these teams once again. We got game five. Coming up next, I want to hear from you, Enigma. Any forecasts that you have for the maps to come? We've had a few matches now to see these teams get into it. What are you looking for next game? 
I'm looking for the hot drops off Rip again. I mean, we saw with the first Miramar, with the first Erangel, people were just fighting off Rip. They don't know where these people drop. Now, this game, we might see a little bit less of that. Or we might just say, you know, let's take the rematch. Let's get it all, you know, balls to the wall sort of thing and just say, you know, let's put it all out there in these last two matches. You love to hear it. All right, guys, we've got uh, Miramar coming up next. We're going to take a quick break, load this lobby up, and we'll be right back with the action. Stay tuned.
Welcome back. We got Game 5 action on Miramar kicking off. I'm here with Enigma to bring you all of the action of the Challenger Finals. We are down to the final two games to see who moves on to the Premier Finals this Thursday. Only four teams will make it through. Enigma, who has caught your eye so far? Uh, it's got to be Dauntless. You know, they were a little bit lackluster in the first two games, but these last two, I mean, have been stellar performances out of them just in terms of you know being able to shoot themselves up the leaderboard we we're worrying about them not being able to make that top four to get back in that premier league finals um but i mean i think with these last few games they have a really good shot of keeping it up there they really do uh dauntless has looked good today i feel like olympia esports has looked pretty decent they've got to be somewhere around the cutoff Execute had a strong start. They've gotten eliminated early the last couple of games. They'll be looking to bounce back here on Miramar, which historically has been a pretty strong map for them. Uh, Max Split has looked pretty good today as well. And then also, of course, uh, got to give a tip of the cap to Dave. He loves him some <laughs> zombie boys. They've gotten a, a chicken dinner now to their name. I believe a second place earlier today as well. Uh, zombie boys, maybe are, you, are they going to go back to back here, Enigma? I. I want to give it to him, but I got to say, no, I'm not not feeling it with the zombie boys. We could say, you know, it might have been luck, or maybe it's just they're an expert at getting into the late game situations, PB. I think that maybe will be at the, after today. If they qualify into the top four, that's going to have to go with. I will uh, I will definitely be eager to see how the, it pans out for them here in game five. They're already on the ground. They've landed. Uh, taking some loot at the church, it looks like. Here's the plane pass slices right through the middle of the map. And uh, ultimately, it looks like Los Leones may have the most traffic here in it. We'll see. But no real early engagements that I'm looking at, uh, except for maybe Look at uh, Telly down there in the south. Bope has actually cut them in half i wonder if he's uh just decided to go get a car or what's going on i believe that execute the first mirror mark did like a little south split just south of los leones but talking about los leones right now i mean we had three teams last time in there and now there's only one at least it's bope you know they have been strong the last few games so you know maybe some people don't want to you know challenge the team that's feeling themselves don't want to go out early we are going to the last two games so when we do get the chance to see the scores and stuff like that, we're going to be seeing, you know, what's the cutoff? Southern part? Island, oh! Southern Island, let's go. We caught the tail end of it. In, Rotation. In the Southern zone. We might see it. We'll see if the Challenger series is once again blessed here. And I finally have some scores to report. And uh, would you believe it? There's a four-way tie for fourth place right now for Four. the last spot to, to qualify. And not only that. Uh, there are six teams within two points of each other for fourth place here. So this is, uh, this is going to be interesting. Not going to lie. Uh, the top four as it sits right this moment. Well, I, I'll give you the top three. We got execute in first place. We got max split in second place and dauntless in third place. Dauntless. There is a big tie, a big old pickle mess in, uh, slots four through eight, maybe. Got Rock Esports, X Base Esports, Olympia Esports, and Boat Esports all with 32 points. And then Control just one point behind. And then somehow with the placements oh, that God. they've had, Zombie Boys is in ninth place. I don't know how, but I hey. thought they'd be up there more. I'll be honest with you. Same. I thought they might be cracking top four, and uh, they're sitting in ninth, although they are only two points out of fourth place. Yeah. Still a chance to, you know, weasel their way back in, I guess you could say. But I mean, the for sure, we'll get these on screen for you guys too uh, at some point here to uh, consume. But the, the the fact is, execute is in number one spot right now, and they've got a bit of a cushion. And then everything else super close. <laughs> Max Split and Dauntless though sitting in second and third. Yeah, I mean, Dauntless. We're, we're gonna have to see how get this into game it here with goes, strangers. To be honest, we're gonna have to see how it goes mm -hmm. after this game because if the same people, you know, we saw execute got eliminated early last match, it could be just eight or ten teams out of the lobby all just looking for that top four spot you know what's insane as well what aside from this fight that's about to break out right now between <laughs> lethal mentality and x base esports well i gotta say what's insane is light work i thought they'd be a bit higher in the ranking yeah they are 18 elams um they have zero rank points oh gosh so 
Uh, yeah, they're yeah. number 11 in the lobby, and that was not something I expected. I thought they might be knocking on the door at top four, and uh, no, they're not. They were getting the kills. I mean, I just, I really thought they'd at least pick up like three or four placement points, maybe. But we also look at, you know, they don't have any bonus points either. And a lot of these teams above them, I'm seeing 10, 8, 5 even. I mean, just those few points puts you back up in that contention. Because right now, I mean, essentially, they're needing to finish top three in this game or they're out of it. That's a great point. I mean, looking at bonus points by themselves, Ruck Esports, Ruck has 10 bonus points that they earn through the qualifiers. Those 10 have them tied for fourth place right now. Tied for moving on. That's how important those are for Ruck. And again, we'll uh, keep an eye on all these teams. Lethal Mentality, currently the lowest ranked team in the lobby right now, and they're squaring off against X-Base, which right now they are tied for fourth place. So x -Base needs to win this fight, and this should vault them into the driver's seat as far as moving on to those premier finals. And I feel like, you know, the last few matches with Lethal Mentality, I thought they'd almost be higher as well. I'd see them take a few fights. They're getting a few crucial yeah. knocks they're needing, but they're just not really putting it together, I guess. I mean, they are, you know, a three-man, unfortunately, this game, so it really just puts them at a disadvantage. Takes a 1v1, but oh. one tap. Oh. A little bit of an off angle, too, across the street. Didn't know he was there. It's just down to Snickers in the little window angle. I think they kind of know where he's at, too. But X-Base also a trio. So this is a fair 3v3 fight, PB. Oh. Good shots. They definitely know where he's at now. Snicker on the retreat right now. Unknown on the push. 1v1. Teammate's not up with them yet. Hear the roar of that DBS. That thing is just scary in close range. Snicker with the UMP. Good shots. Doesn't quite connect here, but these uh, these X base players need to get coordinated here and push this guy at the same time. Looks One like opting the for the reds. revive, but it's a matter of time now. A little bait play. The guy that was low ran in. Nice. A little easy 3K. Like seeing that. You know, unfortunately, lethal mentality just not. I guess, you know, finding their stride. I don't know if it was a player, unfortunately, had to leave after the first match. I believe they were four-man in the first match, but, you know, unfortunately for them, don't think they're going to be able to get a win with 30 or so kills in the next match. So You know what's sad? It's sad for X-Base because there was only three players that they could collect <laughs> from. <laughs> so only three there, but hey, they will take it as that actually vaults them into third place overall. So you love to see that for them. X-Base uh, quietly starting to stack those points, having a pretty decent day so far. And we are down to just this and the next game to decide who moves on to the Premier Finals on Thursday. Yeah, and I mean, the point buffer, too, the only real team that's got a, a significant buffer and possibly staying in that top four is Execute right now. I mean, Max Split had only about six points from that pickle mess of fourth place from being able to get caught up to him. So, I mean, with that, that's essentially one squad wipe, and if you place lucky enough to get one or two points, you're already up there in second. Indeed. You've adopted my pickle mess term. <laughs> It's a, it's a great descriptor of things that are just, like, not right in the world. And, uh, yeah. Southern Zone, nobody seems to care right now. Everyone seeming to rotate north, which is fine. We'll see if it actually goes down there. But in the middle of the map, we got ourselves some execute action. You got a little, little tally action going on right now. And we'll see if... Uh, See if they can get into it here with Bope on the rotation out. And then we also have Control right in the middle of the map, just south of Picado. And there is the circle. We'll see. Give us the hard shift down there. Come on, PUBG Mobile guy. We can do this. <laughs> no one down there yet either. It'd be an all-out little space race almost to the south. That's what I'm talking about. Oh. Someone take his license. Oh, no. Oh, did they get too really stuck? Needs oh. to take his license. You didn't get the buggy stuck, at least. Oh, okay. Oh, roll it, roll it. And he's good. All right. Still Circle in, form. PB. We're still in. A, a substantial part is still in, too. That's actually a fair bit. Both of the Southern Islands down there are still in. We'll see if any... I mean, these teams... I don't know how many of them were in the lobbies. I don't remember which groups had... Because I saw at least two circles that were way south. Uh, Minas del Sur... Los Egos, and uh, yeah, I mean, if anybody experienced those, you might see some of those teams start to rotate down. 
I've had at a, least three of these teams have seen it. I've had a Higo finish, but I've never had the the Sarah finish on that western side of the South Island. So, I mean, there's a first for everything. I wish I was there to actually see it because it I was mean, crazy. It's a, it's a Honestly, one in a million with that. I mean, it, it really is. I had never seen it before in all of my games of playing, you know, PUBG Mobile, thousands of them, and it's like. Never once seen it go uh, south to, like, the center part of that main island. And the funniest part was that there was five or six teams alive. No one had any idea what to do or what <laughs> angles to hold or, like, what terrain to hide behind. It was really funny. There was, like, all these blunders happening. Made for a lot of, like, chaos, but ultimately some really new, fresh action. So I'm really hoping we can see some of that uh, for the finals on broadcast because we had the chance of seeing it behind the scenes. And it's like, if only this was live. We were so, so mad that we weren't broadcasting those games. But... No, it is what it is. We take a peek here at Olympia, trying to get into it with Extreme Rage, and I don't know if they're going to be successful as they try to rotate out immediately. A little handshake. Kind of covering each other. A little handshake. Yeah. Just, you know, first zone, second zone, just take our sweet little time and get in. I got to ask, PB, I haven't seen some, some crazy outfits in game. What would you wear if you're in a game like this, PB? Because, I mean, this clown backpack yeah. is not something I'd be opting for. No, I, I honestly, I think I would go with the bold choice of just running around naked in my <laughs> underwear. Like, I don't know. It just seems like almost humiliating, right? If you see this dude running around underwear, only a backpack, and it's like, okay, did I just get shot by that guy? Like, come on. <laughs> so that's probably what I would rock in a competitive uh, setting. Well, you know, we see a lot of people here, too, like, rocking their own outfits and stuff like that. And there's a few key people in the competitive scene that are able to, you actually are able to instantly recognize them because they're one of the only people that wear it. One of the only people that wears it. Uh, Pyro used to wear like a corn outfit, that old like corn cob outfit. I remember that. We have Sixus who used to wear that elf like Santa outfit. Um, and then Zephon actually wears the diamond outfit. That's like the skin tight, like suit. Uh, so with this sort of stuff, I'd actually like to see teams start to adapt to more of like either a naked aspect, like you said, where they're all matching or just an outfit that's not as easily recognizable. Because if we go into these tournaments like this, you might not know where that team dropped. But if you've gone against them enough, whether it's in scrims or whether it's in the qualifiers, you're able to start picking up, hey, you know, I think this is this player on so-and-so's team. And with that, it just really leaves like it that. open. Yeah, I like that as a as a general dynamic that uh, you know we could see in competitive matches. I would love to see for esports like custom skins, you know, oh, jerseys sweet. essentially. So it's like you know, sure you still have to like you know the kill feed's not uh, revealed to you. It's just like normal tournament standard kill feed. But like you could know it's like oh that's in hyper. I see the black and red jersey or whatever. Like yeah. you know what I mean? Like I don't know. I think that could be really fun and it would make scouting. Uh, even more valuable because you got to know For what sure. all these other teams look like. I don't know. I think that would be a fun little element. I think with that too, you know, it brings up the question of do people get to fully customize their skin? Like let's say N Hyper and PMPL gets their own skin. Are they doing just a color combination of like red and black or something? Or let's say if C9, for an example, is to be in the scene, are we going like blue and white? Or is it we're all going to have the same exact skin? It's just color differentiations that you could choose from that even – you know, a casual player could buy and, you know, rock themselves and be like, hey, you know, I support this team or I just really like how the skin looks. It leaves options. I mean, endlessly. I would love to see that personally. And, you know, obviously the the easy route would be to make like a generic like here's some pants or shorts or whatever and, a you know, custom colored shirt with a logo on it. I'd be pretty yeah. easy to design and develop and implement. Be even cooler though if you could like come up with like custom like you know even weapon skins and the whole works for each team obviously that'd be a lot of work and probably not worth the you know the investment but it could yeah. be really cool and uh i i agree with you i'd be buying you know my favorite team skins and stuff to uh you know maybe maybe rep in game next circle's about to close and uh i'm excited to see we're gonna get the hard shift let's go down to los eagles give me that los eagles come on baby Execute and Dauntless are set up for it a little bit, too. Oh. No. Lame. Boo. Boo. L. I am not paying attention for the rest of the game. It's <laughs> over for me. Chumacera is the center circle. And now it's honestly with this, this shift back up uh, north, this becomes interesting because you know how a circle starts to go one direction for many shifts in a row. 
everybody starts to trend that way and then it comes back and now you've got everyone you. kind of yeah it's, it's like a little yo-yo effect so now you're going to see a, a lot of gravity from the center of this one and teams like dauntless are going to get pulled back into the uh you know the others uh folks that were playing that hard shift and it didn't end up happening so we'll see sure. what happens here everyone but lethal mentality still alive oh a little bit of a pull up by Bope onto olympia there's kind of isolated out he's front and back a little prone but he's not over it is Head sticking out or something, or he's got a dump truck back there, but Bope getting the early finish onto him, fully just pressuring them on top of this. So I'm not liking this for Olympia. Fuego Betty's dead. been pretty clutch today. We'll see if he can come through once again here. Fuego on the aggressive. You can tell Bope's feeling a little bit, man. The Ooh. way that they're playing right now, they're hitting shots, lasers. I mean, wow. Bope is... They're on one right now, man. They're starting to string together some action. And just like that, uh, they put together four and will put Olympia out of the lobby. The interesting thing here is they were tied with Olympia for fourth place coming into this one at 32 points. And those four are absolutely clutch because that moves them ahead of uh, the likes of X-Bases as well. So, Bope oh, taking control. One team we haven't really heard a lot of either those excuse right now i mean i've seen them be in certain spots the first aaron go game i really thought they would be just slaughtering olympia um but they essentially just got ran through they let olympia full slam into them pull up and just completely wipe them only lost i think one player but the big southern game. side right now is i don't know what's going on executes up onto the hillside Donald's trying to rotate underneath them just gets caught out by the i believe it was a trap set up by execute on that southern side of the road Got a little bit of a lip, but picking up essentially two free kills. Telly getting knocked on the very top. I don't think uh, HC will be pushing him at all whatsoever, but I mean, execute executing really well on this little trap play to get these kills. I'm impressed with how quickly Terran G uh, rotated out of there. He's already to the center of the zone. Uh, leaving his uh, his teammates <laughs> to die, but there's not other, you know, there's no other choice that he really had uh, but he has stayed alive for Dauntless, and they need him. Dauntless coming into this one in third place right now. And uh, they have already been caught and passed by a couple of teams because, unfortunately for them, they have zero elims right now. So he's got to try to do something because the team that is pressuring them and has actually jumped over them right now is Bope. And Bope is looking down their sight at him up on the top of that ridge. Bope just looking down on everyone right now. I mean, after that fight, I mean, Execute even feeling the full force of them just looking down on him, fate, rotating in a buggy, I'd assume, on that southern side and just getting lasered out. But Execute down to just two now. They do have a four E limb, so it's not too bad point wise. You know, at a few points just to make sure they're able to stay in that top four. But I mean, if you're Execute, if you're fate, the IGL, you're saying, you know, we need you to get two or three more points out of this game. We can't be letting this. Absolutely. Let this, you know, with I, the fourth place like being so bunched. Oh, what the? I didn't know you could get up there. How did that even? Oh, yeah. Oh, there's the, the pipe the on the left post. there. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know you could get up there either. You learn something new every day here. Uh, light work has uh, found a nice little spot here with some good sight lines, but let's hope he doesn't get seen first up there because he's got nowhere to go. The hard shift has gone back and centered right on top of Bope. They're on the high ground here. Max Split is pressuring. Again, re Max Split's got the best rotations in this lobby from what I've seen so far. For sure. Um, really nice work from them. They're, they're in a good position early, and uh, Bope, once again, owning the high ground right now. Max Split is uh, currently sitting in second place. So this is a big, big game for them. And uh, same thing for both, man. Uh, this is really, really big for both of these teams. And it comes down to this. I got to say, though, execute with that four piece that they had. I think it's not mathematical yet, but I think they may have clinched themselves a trip back to the premier finals because the gap is getting wider. For sure. And I think this match is just going to come down to Max Split and Bope. It's on top of that hillside because, I mean, Max Split recognized, you know, we don't need to fight this. We have this whole south side. We just came from it. Let's just play late game and just take the 4v4 at the end of the game. No matter what kind of kills we get, we know that the placement's going to at least shoot us up. Because we're seeing it, you know, everyone's watching kill feed. They're seeing these other teams that are in that tied for fourth place race just, you know, honestly just chundering themselves. 
a chance of actually making it into the top four and qualifying uh, for the Premier Finals. Great smoke by Moto to cover his exit there. Excuse had uh, no sight lines on him, and that gets him back into the house. He'll be able to, to, to heal up here. It's absolutely massive Ooh. for Control. Control came into this one one point out of fourth place. So this is massive for them. Really anyone's game right now, the top nine teams are all within a point or two of that fourth place cutoff. And it's all about the top four for this particular tournament. Top four indeed, but excuse needing to honestly somehow win this fight. It's I believe a 2v4 just in the building. They made it upstairs at least so they can limit the amount of angles they get shot from. Whether it's from other third parties and whatnot, but quick, getting down to one HP. If I'm mad, I'd be so mad watching the VOD back, seeing I didn't knock him with that name. Because if they get the knock, it's it's full throttle, baby. I mean, excuse. Oh my goodness, the pump shotgun pull out. I'm not sure if I like this. Uh, maybe he is the guy that hits those control. Being He's able got to no slowly, heels. slowly move in. Oh, get the shots! No, he misses it, but whoa. Oh, and he misses it, Matt. A little bit of a butcher there, but Ross trying to just essentially play spoiler, and he's dead. Never mind. He will uh, bow out of this one. Excuse out of here. Unfortunately for them, they don't pick up a single point out of that engagement, and that is not good for their chances. Still quite a bit behind the cutoff right now. Execute continuing to put up more points. They're up to seven right now in this lobby, and they will definitely be moving on. Two premieres, so we're battling for those last three. And for those, it's literally anyone's game. Yeah, I mean, Premier Indeed is definitely going to be what everyone's looking at. Uh, Stranger BSC somehow needing to find a way into the southern zone shift. Pressured by Extreme Esports. And I believe Bob looking at it from the hillside just south. Uh, G9, unfortunately, having to use a UMP and an M16. He's definitely wanted an M4 and a DBS, but, I mean, you get, you take what you get at this stage in the game. Extreme Rage. Extreme Rage has been a bit to quiet today. Pressure this. They're needing to make essentially the same rotate as uh, Strangers right now going up the hillside. No one watching them, though. I'm not liking this by Strangers. Extreme Rage able to get a lot of real estate going on. There is a solo looking up at him from, I believe, a shack just on the edge of zone. But Extreme Rage looking to possibly punish strangers for the sort of play. They do have a vehicle, which I, I didn't realize at the time, but that is not going to last long. He's got two squads kind of looking down onto him. Max Split picking off Casper there. You can see it in the kill feed. And uh, that's huge for, for Max Split because they, they own that position that we saw a bit earlier on. It has moved a bit, though, and uh, they are on the very, very edge of the circle, owning this position, and it is all about Ruck going up against Strangers right now. With a little bit of extreme rage coming in on the other side as well. Strangers went from a decent position to, oops, we forgot to watch the back door, and extreme rage has slipped right in. And all it's peeking over, I mean, he has the freebie knock, knows where the other one is, and it's just seeing this 1v1 take place. AD getting caught out as well, all, you know, really clutching up for his team right there. The rest of them playing a little too passive, in my opinion, but all, you know, recognizing these little freebie points and being able to, you know, help them help push up his team into that top four contention. Look at Excision on the on the front of the screen right there. He is center zone. He's went and secured it for his team. And uh, Max Split trying to rotate their way in. I will say Bope is up to seven elims right now. Again, they've owned the high ground. Legend goes down. Excision owning that position. That was an absolutely masterful rotation again by oh. Max Split. But the return fire. Oh, man. Vehicle explosions. That's going to eliminate Roa. Bope is on the ropes right now. Down to one player. It's just Fuego holding all the team's hopes. Yeah, I was thinking, you know, Max was really just making an error right now, letting Rhea get down to the shack and get the off angle. But Max, luckily being able to recognize it, turn their attention. You saw they literally just started sending cars down onto the shack, just trying to just kill this player on the shack. Fortunately, they did. They got the player for Boat that was up on top of the hillside giving Overwatch as well, forcing them to actually retreat, get Legend revived. So good work from Max being, able, Max being able to pick up at least one kill. They know where the duo is at for essentially one of the other teams that is pressuring them from maybe passing them up or dropping them out of the leaderboard. Absolutely. We got Extreme Rage now on the high ground. 
really decent position in the zone as well, and they've been kind of quiet today. This is a team that finished the qualifiers in third place overall. They, uh, I believe, were tops in one of their groups, so Extreme Rage coming into this with some expectations. And uh, they got to deliver here. Starting the to get the momentum boys. going. And the zombie boys have made it back <laughs> in. They've been quiet, but they're not quiet no longer. Top four. I can't even believe this. Top four, PV. Four elims this game, too. I mean, we're only going up from here. Maybe. They have been quiet, but hey, we just put up a bunch of Whoa. damage in that last one. Great nade over the ridge there. But the zombie boys are about to be... Oh, overwhelmed potentially, but some shots out from them as they defend their position against Max Split. 1v2. Nate does a little bit more damage. He's, he's just forcing it. Ember, no. I thought he had it, but, you know, Max being <laughs> able to clutch up, they did lose one player on it. But Extreme Rage not making the choice of actually capitalizing on all this fighting. They don't know where the last snake is on the edge of zone. Oh, maybe they do actually. You see the Extreme Rage player just throwing Kobe's down on the brick. Big props to uh, Zombie Boys, though, for making it deep into another game. They actually picked up some Elims this time, too, finishing with five. So uh, that's going to be helpful for their position. They are close, but uh, I don't know if that's going to be enough to vault them into a position of advancing because so many of the other teams, such as Max Split, such as uh, Bope, they have put up some big points here and control even though they only have one player remaining, still has the opportunity to score some great rank points and potentially third party some action here and pick up another point. No, I think the big fight right now is going to be, well, never mind. Briggs is going to get a knock on dude. Jess of all players out in the open gets caught out and this could be leaving it open. But oh my goodness, nice passive play by Hollow. Waiting out the player to rotate in. It's a 2v2 now, maybe getting the res onto Jess, making it a 3v2, having the high ground. The problem right now though, PB, is... He's going to have to get down and help his team. Take, allowing them to take this 2v2 fire on the ridge, I think, is too, you know, sketchy. They need to just try to take this 3v2 man advantage fight. How did that grenade land that close to him? Did he really throw it that far? He's got the arm. I was like, man, I hope that wasn't another team nade because I saw smoke land right <laughs> after it. <laughs> like, I wouldn't oh, be no. surprised. Uh, yeah, right? Send. So, hey, here's the, the opening. Penda goes down, and now we got Max Split on the ropes. This is what we were wondering about was can they hold their own in this gunfight? Excision goes for it. This Whoa. is a tall order for him. Oh. He might be up to the task, though. Oh, and he gets it. Insane. Max Split goes 1v3 with low health to win it. And that right there, ladies and gentlemen, might be the play. That sends them to the Premier Finals. Max Split owns the end game here, and Excision solos the lobby to get the chicken dinner. That might be That first. was absolutely insane. Holy crap. So with that, we saw a lot of things go down that game. Crazy, crazy finish in this one. Excision, I got to give a huge tip of the cap. Not only for the obvious 1v3 towards the end of the game, but the early rotate in. He was the one to secure that shack. He made it into the zone while all the other teams were still fighting. He snuck in, secured, and like basically anchored the beachhead for his team. And they all followed their way in, bullied their way in, and Max Split getting the victory against all odds there. Enigma, what did you think of that? I mean, I think they're in first after that game. You've seen Execute, you know, getting a few kills, getting a few points, but they're not pulling off games like that right now. They only did that in the first, second, third game. We're getting the later half. So, I mean, if I'm Execute, I'm kind of, you know, sweating a little. Are these other teams that are down below, you know, starting to catch and creep up on us and possibly even drop us out of that top four? Definitely. Uh, for this one, I think that Execute is holding on. Barely. Okay. Barely. But it's a it's a close race right now. But I think, I think, and again, this is just uh this is just my eye test. This is no based on nothing. Max Split and Execute, I think, are moving on. Those two, I like to move on. It's everyone else has got to figure things out. How are we going to leak? You know, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll figure this out. But game five in the books. And uh, we got Hot Jukes back with us, dude. Did you catch? Did you catch Yo, the end of that game? 1v3 action, baby. Max split. I mean, we had the question, right? Saying, hey, like, we like how they play. We like the positioning. But can't they finish towards the end? <laughs> you know, yes, sir, they can. And they only need one player to do it. Excision, man. Absolutely 
Brilliant clutch from him. Dude, I, I, I like Max Split. I'm not going to lie here. We've watched them today. They, their rotations have been on point. They've been quick to the zone. They've gotten the center circles. They've been great on positioning. And it hasn't been, hey, we're just going to chill and the zone's going to bless us. They have gone and got it. Excision, yep. great example there on that last game. So really huge uh, tip of the cap to them for their strategic play. But when it comes to the, you know, the actual gun skills, uh, we saw it there on display at the end of that one, and they put it on display, earning that chicken dinner, though. I mean, 20 points in the column for them, 10 for the kills, 10 for the chicken dinner. That was absolutely massive. But, uh, you know, Hotchukes, got to come back to you, man. You know who made it towards the end of that game once again? It's the Zombie Boys. What are you That's thinking of them? right, dudes. I mean, uh, Dave knew something that we didn't know, man. I mean, he picked the right squad. Crazy, right? They get blessed in games in game number one. They get blessed in Sandhawk and just absolutely go ham there. And then here, right, you see them just crawl their way zombie style into the end of this game. So, I mean, they could absolutely be in contention for that top four. I love it. Enigma, uh, give me your give me your dark horse uh, to sneak in here. We got one more game coming up. It's going to be Aaron Gell. Who is going to make it in, dude? After that last game, I'm feeling extreme rage. You know, they did just get 1v3 at the end, you know, to chunder the game. But, you know, they, they still, you know, got the points. They still got the placement, the kills. So I think with this, they're going to be able to clutch up over these other, you know, teams that were splitting hairs with that fourth placement and be able to get into that next series of the tournament. They got to be extreme raging right now. That's for sure, <laughs> man. Getting 1v3 like that. Chicken dinner on the line. Trip to the Premier Finals on the line. You hate to see it for him again. Good play, though. You can see here in the replay, good position. Slipping in the back door with strangers not paying attention. Not only that, they get the third party there and a squad wipe. But this is the fight right now uh, that really won the game. It was both getting pushed off the shack. Max split, getting this positional battle won. And ultimately, you can see them, uh, you know, overwhelming the zombie boys. Got a little bit caught there. And they never did really recover, but thankfully, they were able to clutch it out here. Excision just absolutely went ham towards the end of this game. There's a lot of teams right now sticking out as uh, really having a lot of potential and potentially able to move on here. Um, Boat is definitely one of them. Boat put up seven elims last game, and that's three games in a row now where they've got a bit of momentum going. Hot Jukes, do you think... Bope is going to make it back to Premier. Oh, it's going to be so close. Oh, hold on one second. Let me just watch this greatness one more time. Oh, <laughs> DBS. Bop. Oh, DBS City. How about you? You want some too? I got it for you. Oh, my Let's gosh. Oh, go, baby. Oh, that was so hype. But Not a single bullet was landed there, Jukes. It was, it was disgusting. He had 30 this health. They were invisible. using automatic weapons. He's like, what bop, happened? Bop. Who knows? Bop. Oh, that was crazy. But Bope, dude. Bope. Can Bope pick it in? That was the, one of the teams that was from uh, the Premier Division that I didn't pick because I, I didn't have faith in them, man. I mean, we saw them get bodied in the Premier Division, but they have crawled up right here. They got to watch out for teams like Rook Esports, I want to see make it, you know? Uh, Dauntless is another squad. I mean, I think it's an absolute oh. battle, especially for that fourth slot. 100%. So uh, it doesn't look like we have the graphics just yet, but we do have some scores for you. Uh, As mentioned. It's like, hey, we don't we, we don't have scores. <laughs> we, well, we, we almost we almost have scores. We were so close to having scores. The good news is we're writing down all of this information. We will have accurate scores. The right four teams will be moving on. Just can't tell you about it yet. It's like our super secret. You know what I'm saying? So uh, hot jukes. We got we got Bope coming in clutch. We got Maxwick coming in in clutch. But I'm gonna make you wait just a little bit longer for game number six. We got one final game coming up for all the marbles. Four teams will be moving on to the premier finals. We'll find out who they are just after the break.
We're back. We are back. We got one more game to go, ladies and gentlemen. I am very excited to dive into this one. So I have some scores relate to you <laughs> verbally. So here's the deal. Here's the breakdown. Here's the skinny. Max Split with their victory in game five. The clutch heroics of Excision and company have moved into first place. They have passed up Execute by one point. So they are sitting with 58 points. Execute sitting in second place with 57 points. Those two teams look safe to move on. The gap between them in third is fairly large. Bopey Sports currently in third place with 42 points. So a 15 point gap between second and third. Then it gets crazy because Zombie Boys oh. NA are sitting in fourth place right now with 39 points. Zombie Boys. 39 points, but that's not the end of the story, Hot Jukes. Control sits just one point behind Zombie Boys with 38. And we also have to look at Rocky Sports with 35. X-Space Esports with also 35. Dauntless and Extreme Rage both have 34. And Olympia Esports has 32. Everyone else is basically eliminated. All of those teams, there are a lot of them still in. So Olympia, Extreme Rage, Dauntless, X-Base, Ruck, Control. That's six teams. None of them currently qualified, but all of them with a good game here can push themselves into the top four. We are heading to the final game here in just a moment. But I got to get a prediction from Hot Jukes. Who is it going to be that actually clinches the last two spots here? Bop is looking good, okay? Bop is looking real good so far today, so it's hard for me not to choose him. That last spot, man, I am such between a toss-up between Ruck and Dauntless because I kind I want to see both those squads make it in. If I had to flip that coin, I, I got to believe in Klaus, dude. I got to believe in him one time to finish it up here. Dauntless, uh, four spot. That's my, that's, I'm locking it in. I like to pick. Honestly, Dauntless has played very well today. Um, it hasn't gone their way in a couple of instances, but they've rotated well. They've won some fights. I like, I like the Dauntless pick here. Enigma, coming to you, my friend. Who is it going to be? Who's taking the final two spots here? I'm saying Extreme Rage is one of them. The last game was a bit of a fluke. Okay, they made it second. They did get, you know, steamrolled, but the other picks has got to be Dauntless. Those are the two teams right. moving on. I have my picks to lock in here before I throw it to you boys to take away. As much as I want Dauntless to move on, I think Bope has the momentum right now. I'm picking Bope to take home uh, third place here. And I like Control to sneak into oh. that fourth and final okay. spot. They played very well today, and I like their angles and their way they're working. So let's get into it. It's the, the final game. It happens right now. You boys take it away. Best of luck to all the teams. You scallywag, BB, picking <laughs> control right there at the end and leaving us with that enigma. It all comes down to this, baby. Last and game. It's going to be a close one. Well, you know, it might be a blowout. You know, I'm not going to, you know, put that out of the picture yet, but definitely going to be close. You know, here's the question, right? Because uh, let's think about the strategies, right? Like, PB, let's reiterate it one more time for anybody that just possibly could be just tuning in, right? Because I know everybody's watching this and everybody told their friends to watch right now because it's the last game, right? Well, uh, you know, we're looking at Boat, 42 points, going all the way down, and they're in third place. Top four, make it in. All the way down to Olympia Esports with 32 points. And that is a tight race that's one two what made that one two three four five six seven teams no eight teams that could possibly pass them up and right there in 10th place right you got light work with 20 light points. work okay so they have 22 points the chances of them make it in is ridiculously low they would have to win this game and take some teams out early but you know with how they've been playing I think they gotta go for it, right? Now's your time to shine. Now's your time to shine. But it looks like, oh, they might be getting some light work right now in the feed. It's looking, it's looking it's crazy. It's already happening with the Glock. Oh no, not like this. M19. Oh, he's booking it back. Oh, they already lost one player though. 
Oh, we switch into the the revolver. The revolver. Yep. The upgrades. Upgrades. Hot Duke's upgrades out here. Got an M16. Oh, gets bodied. Oh, by Olympia Esports. That's the team right above them with 32 points. This is okay. That's it. That that is the nail in the coffin for light work. Yep, it's over. I didn't want to be the 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 Debbie Downer, but I think it's over for them. I mean, we're That's seeing it. here, Ruck. They've been able to keep up in that contention off of the bonus points, so you know the qualifiers do play a big effect into this. But looks like they're starting to piece away X space right now. Already having what seems to be two kills when they finish this player. And I'm not sure if you're X base, if you just say, hey, you know, we're not, we're not making it. Like, do we just die? But they are one of those teams that is in contention for moving on. But I mean, at this pace, it's not looking good. Hot juice. It's not looking good at all. This is it. I mean, you're right. I mean, they have absolutely enough points to get it done. They just got to clutch up right when it counts. And this is just getting more intense by the second here. Now we're taking a look over here at Milt. Uh, this is Bope, right? This is that team in third Two place. Two teams. Two in 42 contention. points is not enough. 42 points is not enough, okay? Because they got Zombie with 39. They have Control with 38 and Ruck with 35. So if two of those teams just do well and they go out early, Bope is going to have to kick the bucket and do Challenger Division one more time around. So, I mean, we're seeing Fuego off to the side. They might be able to just push extreme rage down to the bottom and you know quick little fact check was confirmed this is the team that is an all women's team competing in this nice. so shout out to them for moving on coach i believe sixes you know a very reputable player in the scene has played for years so you know always love seeing these new teams you know try to learn from some of the best players uh, and you know for them i mean they're showing up that last game you know a little unfortunate i'll say it time and time again but you know this game can always be something and they're going against the team that they're needing to pass up if they wipe out both that puts them in a huge spot to be in that top four position because not only do they eliminate both out of that top three essentially they're getting themselves four points i'll go ahead and that opens the door right that opens the door to one more possible slot if both do continue on here then that just leaves it just a, a pretty much a role for for fourth place so Bope has to stay alive. They know what's at stake. It's more important for them to just stay up at the end rather than take these early game fights. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see them take it real slow here. As a matter of fact, I think we're taking, we're seeing all these teams take it slow because they know what is at stake here, Enigma. Well, I mean, Max Blitz definitely not taking it slow. <gasps> Legend getting oh, no. shot in the back. Okay. A little bit of an early skirmish going on. That's one freebie. Would like to see them get the finish. Oh, wait. That's another knock. That's two knock, Todd. Are you kidding me, Bope? The Chunder. Bope getting dominated by Extreme Rage. Oh, two and players. a third. Oh, oh, it's a third? It is a third. Is it's down. just Nightcrox. Little shark Did you out. hear that? Did you hear that, Enigma? Sounds like the, the lobby music <laughs> to me. Sounds like the door <laughs> opening, bro. It sounds like the door to third place is opening and Nightcrox is holding that knob, just trying to shut it. He's trying to. And but Extreme, Extreme Rage. Rage is not, they're not faltering. They know, you know, let's just take the car, pull Hit up these. on them. You have to. You missed. Oh, no. It's over. Where you're at. That was the uh, alarm the heard around the world. I'm get the tissues. Oh, he gets. Oh, oh wait a minute. Nightcrox. Wait a minute. Nightcrox. Oh. You animal! See, and now they're chasing. Is he going to be able to make it out? They don't know where he's at. They see run. him. Run for the hills, Nightcrox. Run away! Take the money and run. <laughs> Two huge points. I cannot state it enough. Huge points right there. I mean, that'll bump them automatically up to 44 points. And with how this is going on and so many teams going out early... Who knows if those two eliminations right there were the difference, right, from making it and not. And I didn't want to be the person to say it, but, you know, with these teams being so close, do you drop on each other? Are you choosing to drop on these lower four teams that are basically out of contention? Try to pick up what people could say the freebie points if you take the four before. But, I mean, if you're making mistakes like that, 2v1 situation, you're getting 1 v 2 with a DBS on the last player giving them points. On teams above you, oh. I mean, you're just going to be really just punching the air after that.
All right. I wonder what Coach Sixless says after that one, huh? He's gonna be like, how do you think he's how do you think he's handling that? He's he's throwing the popcorn in the air or something. Whatever food Not he's eating popcorn. is, it's it's flying everywhere. And I mean, Nightcrocks is still kind of staying around. Couldn't get the res on his teammate, unfortunately. But I oh mean, maybe gosh, he just tries player. a snake. I don't know what the play would be here for him. Oh, speaking of snake, there's players going out all over the field. Max Splint is almost gone. They lost three players. We missed that <laughs> fight, but they are down to one as well. So Max Split going down early. Now, Max Split did have quite a few points, right? So PB even yeah. said it, right? They, they, they are in first place. They had 58. That might give, you know, execute that first place finish. But with 58 points, they should hold on. But still, it's it's still tough to see them go out so early. Yeah, I mean, execute almost lost a player just now, too. They had to get the res on, I believe, Casper. That's why he's on the back of the buggy. But, you know, not as scary of a situation for execute. It'd be more so just like a, you know, a limp finish, a little bit of a, like, whatever. Like, I'm going to just walk over there and take my first, second place. Top four contention. Or you could win the game out and, you know, be in that top first spot with the point buffer like we saw Ruck come into this and how and Hyper was in the qualifiers. Oh, this is absolutely insane here. We got X-Pace as well. X-Pace lost three players, so they're down to one. And uh, they were around that seventh place with 34 points. So that's, you know, that's devastating for them as well. This is going to be a crazy finish here. For those teams that, you know, want to knock Max Split out, it's going to take two squads on that fourth place down, getting 20-plus points each if they want to have a chance at knocking out Max Split. So that's going to be real tough, especially with how we're seeing teams get knocked out here. But, you know, if you are Bopi Sports, oh, man. <laughs> Nightcrox, it's, he, the, the, show, the weight is on his shoulders big time. I mean, at that point, you're hoping that either Execute or one of those, you know, bottom feeder teams just, you know, has a pop-off game and saves you almost for both, you know, one player up. I mean, we're even seeing it on the map right now, still in Milta, just afraid to move out. And we're seeing a lot of these teams just, you know, almost just be touching the white part of the zone on the map, just afraid to make a move. Because if you rotate in, you're afraid, oh, my goodness, like, is someone at this compound? Are we going to die? Like, are we going to even be able to find a spot? And it really just shows, you know, people that are willing to take risks and if they're able to be, you know, pay off for them in the end. Oh, this is rocket but it's Hellcrime. Hellcrime is one of those squads that has nothing to lose. They are all the way at the bottom of the leaderboards. No chance of making it into that top four. So, I mean, any anxiety they had, any nervousness has got to be gone here. And that could make them dangerous. As you can see, Jinx trying to get some more shots on to... Ruck, who desperately, desperately needs every elimination point that they can get. Yeah, but I mean, they're down to just two players right now. Essentially one. One of them was one HP. And Rucker just looking to full execute on the top side of the hill. A little bit of a stop right. early. Here's the car afraid of the, the pull-up, I think, in the back. But, I mean, this isn't look, ain't, ain't looking good for hell right now. I mean, Rucker starting to move up. Jinx is the only one on this team that's really able to maybe save them from getting just completely wiped here. Oh, full spray. A domination. Here we go. So those are some very huge points for Ruck. And I'll tell you what, seeing Ruck tear up this lobby here is going to set a huge alarm off if you're control, right? If you're control, zombie boys, even Bopi sports, man, you got to definitely be on high alert because this squad is starting off strong. Their whole team up and five eliminations. They're looking really good here, Enigma. I mean, it's going to be six in a matter of seconds right now. I mean, Jinx might be able to take one down with him, but no, it ain't working with that. Seven for Ruck. For them, I mean, these other teams, you essentially got that note notepad out right now, just dotting down. This team's killed X person, and you're really huge. stock and everything. This is huge, though. The zombie, zombie boys, boys, okay? Zombie boys have to hold it down against Strangers BD. A team that is... Where's Strangers BD? Strangers BD is... They are... Oh, yeah, they're in a rough there. spot all the down way at the bottom. There. So, trying I mean, to spoil the dream. they got nothing to lose. But crazy? crazy. The what? That was crazy. Oh, and the what? Zombie Boys is clutching up. I'm putting... I'm Whatever, you know, shaving cream Dave uses or, you know, the tinfoil cap you wore before today is... 
his god sent work because zombie boys is just slaughtering him right now. Oh my gosh, and it's just revenge up left. They're running for the hill, so zombie boys put some points on the board that they need to, especially seeing with Ruck getting some nice eliminations early on, so that's a really huge fight for them. Crazy goes down to revenge, and zombie boys probably going to lose a player here. You need to keep them up. Yep. I mean, there's two you need knocks. Four. Is he going to drive away, or is he going to go for the kill? Maybe he just sends it. Run him over. Last game. He's in the open. Why are you there? Oh, he got <laughs> him. That is devastating for Zombie Boys, especially with seeing how, how Ruck is playing. That is going to make things that much more difficult. They did get some elimination, so that's some decent points on the board, right? But wow. finishing up with three here is going to put you at huge risk. Emmer Boy taking some very nice shots onto that tree. Yeah, I'm getting kind of scared, though, because Lethal Mentality, a team that's got nothing to lose as well, coming up on Zombie Boys, who just lost a player. They're, this compound in early game fight is really not the best because we saw that huge ridge line that hugs the compound, leaves it open mm -hmm. for essentially anyone to pull up, and this is the fight with Max Blitz just running up on the Hell Crime and just getting caught oh, out by God. Jimmy. Just oh! straight caught up and melt the power. Ooh, a crash between each other as well. Jimmy... Taking some shots, but that off angle was wow. disgusting. Get the aerial view of it real quick. It's just Jimmy here with Onyx just a little bit farther back. But, you know, Max is, I'm not sure if it was, you know, that car pull up when they rammed into each other or what. But they really just seemed a little just disorganized on that pull up. And they just got, they ran right into the trap. So, I mean, man, that was crazy there from Hellcrime. But, you know, too little, too late, as Hellcrime is way down on the leaderboards. No chance they were going to make it in, and then they're the first team out here as well. So, you know, good best of luck to them next season, maybe, in the Challenger Division if they make it. That would be nice to see. But this is still a show that we got to watch, guys. It's going to get close here. You know, look at this. Extreme Rage losing two players early on. That's got to hurt, but they did get three eliminations. But I don't oh. think that's going to be enough. Oh, not that Dauntless. Dauntless cannot go down. Dauntless and light. Light work. The team, Hot Jukes, that's had just kills on kills. No placement points. So they are a team that can still, you know, take on these 4v4 fights. Not be afraid to take them. It's more so just getting into that later Ooh. part of the zone. But big Dauntless just losing a really key player right now. Needing everyone what do you think about to this get. Split? I'm liking it, but with them being so spread out and... Light having two players up still. I mean, Light's essentially still one of those teams that's got nothing to lose. If they were to just push out and full send it, that south side is also scary too. Terran G getting the knock on the off angle, but I mean, he's going to have to move fast. The amount of teams that were coming in when the map was shown on that east side, the possibility of them going south or north is a little bit too uncomfortable for me to be wanting to make an off angle like that. But it seems like Dallas is going to be able to make quick work of this. Nade finish for it. It's just him ratting in the shack. Got the DBS, though. We saw it went last game in the 1v3. And he's not, he's not max, but so. A little unfortunate. But Zombie Boy's in the kill feed. Emmer Boy getting knocked by, I believe it was a Strangers player. Strangers BD. That was that single player that was still up by himself. So still poking at Zombie Boy's. Making it more difficult for them to get out of that position. Take a look at Max Split, now down to Mello. All right. Can he pull off what Excision did just in the last game to lock in that first place finish? We'll have to see. But there's battles going on all over the place what here. The? And we got a Marauder on the roof. Push, though. It's a 1v2. Oh, Ember Boy <laughs> hasn't healed yet. Oh, oh not like this. this. Is what you cannot oh! go out to revenge. You cannot go out to revenge. Wait, where's the team? You cannot go out to revenge. Okay. Oh. At least he got him, but Ember Boy was scaring me a little. He let him stay alive a little too long, and the box. <laughs> oh my gosh! I don't even know if you have time to be shooting boxes right now <laughs> with so much at stake, you know. But I get it, you know. Losing a player like that, losing crazy, is definitely gonna hurt. But he did get four eliminations. That's gonna be pretty good. But again, with how all these other teams are playing, it's not enough. They got a lot more to do if they want to hang on and lock in that spot the premier finals yeah that top five top three maybe even just to be safe finish would i think maybe secure them if they pick up a few more kills but, i mean with how close it is it's just a nail biter for the sending 
hundred percent. I have no idea who's gonna make it top four here. Next zone about to pop. Where is he gonna go? Looks like we're gonna have that Gatka finish. That's gonna make things very interesting here. And uh, take a look here at where those standings are. Oh. I mean, what? Wow. wow. Rucker is just punching the air. Look at the split they have. They have the whole west side. Nope, we're going the complete other way. Complete opposite Ooh. side. This makes things interesting. Execute <laughs> big chilling. Not a worry in the world. They got this one here in the bag, especially with that kind of zone. So they're going to be holding that. North of Chopsticks area, waiting for any team to pass on through. And we're going to see some teams coming that way. Dauntless making a great rotation here. I'm not going to say it's oh, a great one the because folks they are getting shot like crazy. Even X Pace, last player up alive, trying to keep his turn in the game. Two shots, one more bullet. That's all it's going to take. Oh, it's on fire. Blow it up. Blow it up. Please. Blow it up. Does Execute see him? They're not looking his way. Taryn taking his attention over from now as we got Dauntless in the chopsticks. And they are in trouble. Their vehicles are blown to heck. And here comes Fetty oh. applying some pressure. He does get knocked, though. That could be from... No, that is from Dauntless. So Dauntless clutching it up right when they need to. Yeah, this pull-up was like a real sketch for him. They just the full send. I'm not sure if they, you know, both teams pulled up at the same time into the dip. But Dauntless, you know, making clean work of Olympia right now. And it's just down oh, to what one player. The nades in the trench are way too good by Terran. He was the player on Vikendi that was actually holding like 15 frag grenades. So, you know, he's definitely feeling it with those. And Dauntless, I'm expecting them just, you know, to make the push. This could be that securing play for him if they're able to hold this chopsticks and the zone ends up, you know, pulling onto them. Oh, this is horrific for Olympia Esports. I think they're all the way down in 10th place. They had a chance to make it to that top four, but they need a chicken dinner at this point, and they can't afford to lose any more players. Alex, it's going to be up to him. Klaus, he's got the nade. Locked and loaded. Oh, he gets them, though. There's one. Alex, one more shot. Uh, Could it do it? And that is the end of Olympia Esports' run for that premiere final. Nice try, so, though. Dauntless, still in it. Alice, you know, luckily not losing another player. Two out of the four players actually having all the kills on Dallas, three and three apiece. But execute, you know, just chilling a little bit. Seeing people just drive by and get slaughtered. Oh my god. Creepy. Oh, and this is the duo right now. It's just one now. Just needs to stay alive for a team. Another huge fight. Here goes X Rays. This is Jess. Jess completely sandwiched between Ruck. And kill switch. Oh, oh and no! just getting picked apart. That is gonna be it for Extreme Rage. You know, and you just think of, you know, what if there was four players that are not two? How would right? you play that differently? And it just, you're really just gonna be... I think almost you had asked me earlier, you know, what does a coach say or what does Sixes say in a position like this? He just goes, you know, there's nothing else other than not losing that 2v1 or, you know, playing that just yeah. in a safer manner or more correct manner. You could say it was either them being sloppy or that, you know, uh, I believe it was the Dauntless player just outplaying them. Whatever the case may be, it's just that shouldn't be happening there in that situation. I can't do it. Can't do it. But, you know, we got to move on. We got to look at these teams because this is a close fight, everybody, for that top four finish, that ticket to the Premier Finals to play with some of the best of the best. And not only North America has to offer, but Latam, Brazil. That is the show you want to make it to. Execute. Looked like they have punched their ticket already, but it's a close fight. Oh, zombie boys. Dauntless, right? Ruck. It is anyone's game for those tickets. And you know the tickets oh, it's are... Just, it's just Nike. Oh! Yeah. Wait, did it hit him? Did it like I just take a I month? think his, his cheek was going through the wall. Oh. Oh, here sense. comes Dauntless. Dauntless with the pull-up. Is he going to drive away? Oh, no. Wait. Nightcrawl. His head's sticking out. Talking I see you. Ah, too smart. Not falling for it. Yeah, Klaus, not falling for that. But hey, you see on the edge of the zone, hot chicks on the east. Zombie boys just, you know, clenching onto the white. That must be their game plan. It seems to be working. Well, really just... zombie boys need to start putting some eliminations in the book here because Dauntless is fragging out of their minds right when they need to. This is getting scary here. They do have two players up left. One is knocked. Oh, and Skipper. Ruck. Oh, here comes Ruck. 
Can Husky get away? I think he's gonna drive Karen off. Pick apart. Dauntless might be in a horrible position though if their cards get blown up. I mean, if it shifts anywhere but on them, Dauntless could be screwed and making that top four. Oh, Casper eating a nade there. This is from excuse as fate forced to run out in the wide open. This is this is open pickings right here. Getting in the buggy, gonna full send it through the smoke. Oh, Drive that up. grenade almost got him. Oh, he switch. knocks himself. I think he knocked himself on the fall. And you know, I gotta ask, what happened with execute? They had such a good spot in zone, and they just essentially got. I mean, Daddy's own just basically killed them all. Yes, it did. An exec excuse. Okay, excuse had 21 points going into this. So they need to like take out the rest of the lobby and win to stand a chance. Ooh. That would be crazy though. Dauntless, they got something to say. They are putting work in here. Seven eliminations so far. On to Ruck, another team right there. And they do get the wow. knock, on, knock on a Husky. That is so clutch from Dauntless. They got the zone too. It's right on them. Skipper's a little bit on an off angle trying to save his teammate if he gets slammed by let's say uh, like Lethal or one of those teams on the northern side, but I mean Dauntless is looking better and better and Zombie Boy is making the proactive play on the pull-up at five miles an hour like a grandma. Anyone in the shack? Yeah. Oh! He made it his fight. teammate! And he this made his teammate! Oh! oh the nade! Oh what? my goodness, Zombie Boys! Ruck! Zombie Boys need to write a check to Ruck because that Saved their life right there from Max Split. Ex excuse, still in this fight, but it is a battle between Zombie Boys, Ruck, I Dauntless. Don't know what happened with Ruck? No, what's the play here? They're just Getting sending it in the open. And they're gone. Was it enough? Did Ruck do enough I to make seen, it? I had seen before they died 13 kills on them as a squad before they made that dive. Now, I think they were trying to clear out zombie boys and they just maybe missed them and just said, screw it, we're gonna keep sending it. But, well, they see that could have put this. them up there. Could have, but there's one team, one team that was down on the leaderboards that's performing so well, trying to finish it out here. It's Dauntless. It really is up to Dauntless. Can Dauntless do enough to knock this squad out Ooh. and steal that fourth place position. Skipper gets knocked. It's up to Klaus. I said it at the top of the show. It's got to be him. Oh, on his no. back. What a beer. And it goes, like goes down. Wow. That's depressing. Was it enough? That's going to be the question, right? Was it enough to get it done right when it counted? Excuse. Right, excuse needed double oh, digit. <laughs> yeah, they needed double digit eliminations and a chicken dinner. Eight so far, possibly making it to 10. That is double digits on the low end, but it could be too little, too late. Good to see them finally show up here at the end. I would be really interested to see where they end up on those leaderboards as they try to take out Divine. And, you know, at this point, too, like, it's not just excuse maybe not like you know performing well as a team but if some of these players you know start performing well oh kobe but if those teams you know just start performing well enough you know even as an individual standpoint you know you make montages you do all that sort of stuff and you put your name out there so excuse you know getting the win unfortunately a little lackluster as some people would say in the overall but you know great from them and ending strong 100 percent. you know this is the place to do it it's the titan series right if you can't get it done with your team is a place where you can make a name for yourself by yourself, right? You can go ahead and look at titanseries.gg, see a lot of the stats from these players and watch them grow within this community. So good, nice clutch there from Excuse. But again, you know, I hate seeing it when it's right at the end, when you got nothing to lose. Teams finally start playing their game, right? Doing what they've been doing and start popping off. So, oh, you know, it's got to hurt a little bit there at the end, but this was such... A close battle. <laughs> Who got top four? Let's bring PB back, right? The big peanut butter himself, bro. How you feeling after that last one? I'm feeling great, man. What an incredible last game that was. It started off early, and I got to say the action in Milta was shocking. The BOPE engagement 
to start oh. things off. The number three team going into the final game immediately almost wiped, and we'll go back and check out some of the action here. Ruck got things going early, and this was one of the teams was on the outside looking in. Ruck had a massive game putting up 14 eliminations in this one. So it was everything that they needed to get that advancement to Premier. So we'll see if that actually pans out for him. But overall, complete chaos all game long. I'm not sure if you guys had a memorable moment, uh, but for me, it was it was literally that very end game with Dauntless kind of going out. What did you guys find uh, that stuck out to you here in this last game? For me, it's the same thing, right? I said it was going to be up to Klaus to get it done for his team, and they made a crazy effort with that third place finish. My question was, is it just enough? Was it enough, right, for them to pass up some of these other squads? Because Zombie Boys, right, that fight with Strangers BD, Strangers BD had the advantage, but they were able to clutch it out and stay alive and get some clutch points when they needed it. 100%. This was a, a really interesting fight, and we saw straight off the bat, we said third place wasn't safe, essentially, and Bope immediately uh, oh. opened the door for every other team. You mentioned it on broadcast. The door is open, and multiple teams took big advantage of that. We're talking the likes of Ruck, who put up massive E-limbs. We saw Zombie Boys even kind of uh, getting into it late in this one as well, and with them sitting in fourth place, you got to think... With their consistent performance all day long, the Zombie Boys have got to be primed to move on. Maybe Dave pulled out his wild horses and actually predicted one to oh, move no. on here. Enigma, what about you, man? What were your final thoughts here on this last game of the day? I mean, the start was looking crazy with Bope and the extreme rage fight, but the memorable part has to be that 1v2 for me. I mean, you're putting yourself in a position four free points on the squad wipe right off rip. You know, there's no no other better feeling than that and then you just get one me too it's like okay like who who are we pointing fingers at like the standings have to be close for them don't think you know they're able to make it in that top four without them being able to place top three but it's just that whole entire sequence of them you know they played the fight well they got the player crossing the street they used the car rotation to get up onto the last player and just chunder that last one me too oh you hate to see it. And also, uh, I got to send my apologies out to Control. You know, I picked them to move on, and the curse is real. They were one of only a couple of teams in the lobby not to score any ELAN points or any rank points in this game. So it's safe to say that Control needing some points to get into the top four, they're not going to be moving on. But I thought they played actually pretty well today. I was impressed with, you know, their angles they were holding, impressed with the way they moved as a team. But unfortunately for them, not going to be enough to get into the Premier Finals just this time. But hey, props to them, as well as every other team here for making it this far all the way to the Challenger Finals. They had to place in the top three in their group to do that. And that's out of a lot of teams. So this was the best of the best of the Challenger Series. I don't know about you, Juice, but the action today did not disappoint for me. Heck no, it didn't. This was so insane. Honestly, for me, I got to give props to Ruck, okay? Because they did so well in qualifying to get here, right? Better than any of the other squads. And they have proven, I think, here that we have a little bit of that clutch factor, right? Because you can teach plays, you can teach rotation, synergy, but you can't teach clutch, baby. You got to be able to get it done when the big show shines. And they showed that they can. Uh, still a lot of work to be done. So if you're Ruck listening... Right, you got to do your homework like crazy if you do make it into those premier finals, right? But Ruck, at all the teams I saw, I'm really hyped to see them come up in this uh, in this division. You you want you had to wonder if their group was maybe a little bit weak after seeing the point spread that they had again, 182 points Ooh. coming into the finals this week, all attained over the qualifiers of the past three weeks, and that was 55 more points than any other team got in their group. So that was absolutely bananas. But with that, they were able to put some good momentum together at the end of this particular finals day. And we're about to find out if it was enough to propel Ruck through to the Premier Finals. So let's check out our final standings of the day. Here it is. Oh, We've got Execute oh, sneaking in for the chicken dinner winner winner and they will be moving on along with max split and look at that ruck with the massive performance in this one they're gonna get by as wow. well and 
the Zombie Boys, Dave. Uh, <laughs> you'll be excited to know the Zombie Boys will be moving along, but heartbreak wow. for Klaus and Dauntless as they fall just short. If they would have progressed, literally, if they would have survived one more placement, they would have likely moved on because, again, they had the chicken dinner tiebreaker. Uh, they likely get some elims to move themselves up. Just so, so close. And this is how important uh, each point is in this one. But Dauntless, the first team to fall. And then the last notable one here is Bolt owning third place going into this game. They fall three places down to number six. Not where they were hoping to finish, but Bolt will have to start next season in the challengers. But Enigma. Let's talk top four here. We got Execute, Max Split, Ruck, and the Zombie Boys moving on. How do you like their chances? And do you think any of them have a shot in the Premier Finals on Thursday? Well, Ruck's the one that stands out to me. You know, we talked about, you know, maybe their lobby was a bit of, you know, just a weaker lobby in qualifiers. But for them, you know, that last game showed and they proved, you know, like Hachi said, that clutch factor you can't teach. They got 14, I believe, eliminations in that last match. And this wasn't an easy lobby. You know, we're looking at the point spread. It was dead even close in that top eight, top 10 position going in the last game. So for them, you know, all eyes on them, seeing if they're able to perform in that premier lobby. 100% hot jukes. What about you, man? Any of these teams sticking out uh, for you as we move on to the premier finals this Thursday? Okay, I'm going to keep it 100% real. All right. Ex I I I'm watching this right now. Execute is the only chance. Execute is the only team that has a chance uh. in the finals. So all the rest of the squads, you guys do not realize how far behind you are when it comes into the Premier Finals because you're facing teams globally, right? You need to see this as the biggest opportunity you have to make a name for yourself in North America. Do your homework 10 times more. You have to outwork these guys more than you could possibly imagine. So... Guy, I, I'm not going to give you any hope because you need to work for it and you have to earn it. This is your opportunity to make a name for yourself. All right. In the words of Hot Jukes, you have no hope, ye challenger teams moving up. I'm just joking. No, honestly, I will say uh, we had multiple teams from the last couple of seasons place well in Premier. It's your time to shine. Excited to see you guys all go for it and do it this Thursday. For those of you guys that have not RSVP just yet, make sure you do that for the event this Thursday, 4 p.m. Pacific time. We've got the Premier Finals. These four teams will be joining the top 12 from the Premier Qualifiers to see who will be hoisting the virtual trophy here for Titan Series Season 2. Thank you guys so much for tuning in tonight. It was a great show. Big props to all the Challenger teams that turned out this season. 64 Challenger teams ultimately uh, getting it done this year. So appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. Big shouts to the production team and the fans for watching. Until next time, my name is Powerbang. See you guys on Thursday.